Gabriela Wong. guys we are all here 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 hello everybody this is your boy jay takashi man and i'm joined with you to uh tonight with my man marvelous opinion and we are here to talk real life in japan and um the last time this cat was on he was on he was here with my 200 sub special when i finally reached 200 so I want to thank him again for, for also being part of that stream because you know you actually showed up and you actually we actually had great conversations so I so I figured he'd be perfect to bring on next, and also to um have at to have actually hear his experience in life and what he's gone through. And guys, don't worry, I'm gonna get that background music on in a second. And since 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 he's new here, oh well, second new here, I'm gonna play the uh the newest our newest uh background song that we had. And I wanna uh thank my man um Arella for making these beats, bro. I've been a huge follower here since 2009. I wait since I got into college, man. I've been and I've just been supporting him ever since, man. Please go to his channel, subscribe. And if you want to use his, if you want to use his music, uh, you can actually lease it for for uh, what twenty four dollars. Pretty much, just go to his site and it's all there to use. Because I've leased five of his music for this channel, and and the quote unquote second channel is gonna be I'm gonna be leasing a song for that particular intro. So be sure to check out his uh, stuff, guys. Uh, his name is El Rello Beats. So don't forget. But, um, <clears throat> all right, let me know if it's too loud or if, or if it seems like this music is going over you. Let me know. Sounds good to me. All right, perfect. And everybody, guys, this is jazz and hip hop. So that's why I got this playing in the background. This will get everybody hit up. Hey, man, listen, hopefully, hopefully I can win a Japanese girl with this shit because <laughs> I love jazz <laughs> music because that's my passion. I love jazz. Especially when nobody's singing, <laughs> it's just one of my favorites. But um, but uh, but shout out to Marla's opinion, man. Here, like I said, so we're gonna talk real life, and we're gonna talk his experience in Japan, and also, um, I guess his marriage life, if he wants to explain that, like what made him decide to get married, things like that. I'm gonna say that for a little bit of the end, because I I want him to I want him to talk about that specifically, because. This brother's married to a Taiwanese woman because, um, and you, and if you, as as you all well know, our brother Black uh, Blacksican, he's married to a Taiwanese woman as well and has and has a son. So I want to give a shout out to the brothers who are married to Ta uh, Taiwanese on here. Shout out to the both of y'all because that's a W for Black brothers right there. Educated brothers, not not niggas. There's a difference. But um, uh, Mr. Marvel's opinion. Uh, thank you for being here, and um. I like I, I would like for you to state to the audience who you are, uh, and I guess you could say where you come from and um, what do you do now. All right, how you guys doing? Marvelous opinion. Um, I'm a YouTuber here on the channel as well. I've been uh, on the platform about three years. Um, I'm actually in the military, currently serving in the Navy. Right now, I'm stationed in Japan. Um, as you said, I am married. I've been married for about eight years now. April Fool's Day. Um, Congratulations, so, brother! Again, thanks, bro. But it's um, it's been swell. It's been good. And basically, uh, my channel. One thing I promote on my channel is being self-aware and how to basically try to, you know, figure this thing called life out. You know, and I'm also going to try to be humble on my channel too. And you know, practice what I preach. You know, it'd be one thing to talk a whole lot of stuff, but you got to walk how you talk too. So. Um, I'm trying to think about putting some content out there that kind of shows my life and shows my growth as well. So you guys can just see and witness too. So it's not just someone talking. You can actually see them putting work in too. So hopefully it'll give you the move in a certain way. That's about it so far. 
Marvelous, thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate I appreciate you saying that because I'm more of an action feel out of the words, and I really want to act out what I say. I don't mean act out like a kid. I'm talking about like I want my actions to speak for my like, every movement that I do, instead of just saying something. And because I've always said like expression is the best is the biggest form of uh, of talking of communicating. I mean, techni- technically, for real, we're gonna be real. Like I've read a lot of ladies just by reading body language. Not just what you say, movement. I got better at that over the years. And I think just because I'm very observant because I'm an artist. A graphic designer artist. But it, I think it's just a matter of me just really knowing communication and really reading people. I don't want to ever lose the ability. This is a skill I've fallen in love with that I've gotten. And I don't want to ever want to lose that because I might come in handy for when I get married. I'm like, oh, yeah, she meant that. Let's go. Let's, let's knock that out. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. She meant let's go grocery shopping. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Like. Like vamos, let's get out of here. <laughs> but um, but 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 uh, I think um, I checked out some of your content on your channel, and I do like what you post up, dude. Even though it's not long as hell, I do like that. But you're keeping it short and brief. And I think you should have way more subscribers. I got to, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I have to. Well, like I want well, to keep it long, but people don't really engage. <laughs> yeah, they, well, well, here's my thing. Even with my streams and and the videos that I post up for people. I don't expect everybody to view my stuff, but I would love to get mm. a decent viewership from it, like gotcha. above a hundred or something like that, at least. Yeah, Things yeah. like that. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't reached, I haven't reached, I haven't, I haven't reached a point where I've got like a K or something like that. I think, I think when I get one, a thousand subscribers, particularly, the audience might go up. And I got, to talk to, I got to talk to my brother about that. Like I have to build a viewership audience and things like that. Like that's important to me, particularly. And um, I love it, man. I just. I, I told him I said I'm willing to put in like I, said, I put in money for this new equipment. I'm putting in money trying to get a new camera soon. Mm. Uh, don't worry, I said it down the line. But the thing is, what I really want to do is just talk about what I love doing, and that's like having during conversation with cats like you, but also having a channel with that, that does anime too. Because mm. I think pretty soon I'm going to be moving all that anime stuff just to that channel, and that's what's going to be uh, be dropping over there specifically. And yeah. we're, here's just gonna, here's just going to be the chill place where you can just talk about real things. And brothers just expressing their opinions, and I just want to hear perspectives of different people. I'm not here to try to preach an echo chamber. I'm not I here like to do that. that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like cults. I just don't. I'm not a fan of them. Mm-hmm. All the all of you guys are Trigon supporters. Not you. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a that's a Teen Titans reference, y'all. If y'all know Raven, is Trigon's a father, and he had a cult of people to follow him. So no, I'm not one of those people. Gotcha. And I'm not, and I'm not a sheep. The furthest thing from that because i disobey a lot of stuff <laughs> and reject a lot of things mm-hmm. don't reject facts i reject nonsense and bs but um oh, yeah. but but um but but mr marvel's opinion i want to i want to ask you brother so sit um since this stream is about you let me ask you a few questions so what made you want to move to japan that's number one and um and again i guess the follow-up to that would be are you enjoying your time over there? Okay. So, reason why I came out here. Well, I chose orders to come to Japan for a couple of reasons. Uh, first reason was I was always interested in Japanese culture. As I was young, I watched anime. Then I got a little bit older in my teen years. I got into the car scene. Still heavy in the car scene. And then um, my wife moved mm-hmm. to Taiwan. I figured like, well, Asia is closer to, you know, it's closer to where she lived at. You know, she lived right below us, so it's like a three-hour flight. So it seemed like, you know, like a no-brainer for me. And also, I figured, I thought, <laughs> I thought my wife would appreciate out <laughs> here more because we're just coming from Spain, and they don't really have much Asian cuisine. So being over here, it's more Asian cuisine. And she's just like, yeah, but it's not like Taiwan. I was like, oh my god no pleasing someone so <laughs> she, she, she she's okay with it but um she has a kind of impression i do too i will say this going from spain to japan every place has its pros and cons all right agree japan is very um and this is what describing what it's like for me now it's very organized very punctual uh, i'm not trying to hyper like it's perfect it's not perfect um they just do common sense things and everything is taken in consideration. That's the big thing. These people, I think I understand why they why they are the way they are. Besides this island trying to kill them, you know, no lie, this island is uh, 
it's not not like Australia trying to kill you. Australia really tries to kill people, but Japan is like um, these people rely on each other. You know what I'm saying? You know, with the Fuji being what it is, and the earthquakes and tsunamis, every, all types of things happen here. So people really depend on each other here. So they practice to basically be more patient and consider with another because all they got is each other. So that's the one thing that makes them stand out compared to us in America. Uh, they're way less selfish in this country. Um, even, um, let me see, I lost my my card. Um, I think it was my debit card, credit card. I was at a hotel and I went back to the hotel and the lady said, hey, uh, we have your card. Someone had turned it in and it was out in town. So this person had somehow tracked me back to my hotel to give me back my credit card. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So this is that's just some of the things that are common here. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to say you'll never get robbed, but um, the chances of you getting robbed are very slim. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh at that. But, um... Yeah, but it don't happen like that. Like right now, I got my bike outside, no chain on it, no nothing. It's just sitting out there in front. You, know you shot me as a biker boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I can't do nothing yet. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nothing's going to happen to it out there. It's fine. Um, you can leave the house with the front door open if you want to. I wouldn't advise you. Now, if you were to that. park on the streets of Philadelphia, that's a well, different that's just story. That's stupid. Yeah, man, you can exactly. just park there. It doesn't matter. You can be a locked up car to break into it if they really want it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I said, it's just a lot different over here. And like I said, it's not to say this is innocent. Let me wrong. They got theft out here, too. I'm a police officer, so. We had an American, he had his skyline stolen from him. Um, I forgot how they got it, but basically, wow. yeah, they stole his, his uh, R32 from him. Uh, it was a white one and a gray one that was stolen. Um, oh, wait, R32 it, or R34? 32, the, the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one that yeah, got popped with. Yeah, the one that was called Godzilla in Australia. But yeah, so that one, um, and I tell you right now, though, I, like, the shock and all wears off very quickly when it comes to that particular car because that's the being out here for like shoot i've been here for two years now so it, it's nothing now so like an r34 like some people are like oh my god that's so cool like me i'm like eh. it's like looking at yeah, yeah you, you've seen it all like yeah <laughs> yeah man. i see it so many times it's not it's so common over here so but it's still a nice car though i'm not hating on it it's a, it's a really good car um i love my car more though um i'm not even trying to stunt but i think my car looks more pretty in my opinion um, that car's faster, but my car's prettier. I got a, a 370Z, so my one's nice. Okay, man. Yeah, she pretty And, and I want to say this, guys. I used to be a big uh, uh, car, and then it was like in middle school. Like, I used to be like, because of Fast and Furious and things like yeah. that, I used to love how the cars looked. The design, I was a huge car head, like literally at a young age. Okay, there were two things I loved a lot. It was Pokemon and cars. Mm -hmm. That's what I watched when I was young. And I was like, I like. I gotta get one of those. <laughs> Did you ever uh, I play it. the card game when you were younger for Pokemon? Like I collected the cards and I practiced the playing it, but I actually never got to like play with nobody. Like I, I was in play. one tournament. I'll say that because I had to buy like a mm. trading pack, all yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. and stuff like yeah, and um came like third place. Surprisingly, oh, nice. a lot of people didn't understand the point of it. Like but um, the Digimon like, shit, I just had the cards. Uh, <laughs> I you didn't just even had get involved with that one. Digimon, I didn't even... I was kind of hating on that as a long young kid. I was like such a big Pokemon fan. I was like, get this bullish out of here. This cheap knockoff I mean, stuff. I will say this. But some of, it was dope, It's easier dope to play the Pokemon stuff. than it is Digimon. I would agree with you. It's easier mm -hmm. to play Pokemon than it was Digimon card game. The reason why is because... I, I say it like this. I think the gaming franchise for... Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, the gaming franchise for Pokemon is better. Digimon-wise, show-wise is better. Mm. Don't worry, that eventually fell off. <laughs> after, after season four, I was done. Gotcha. Because that was the last great season. Season five, I said, like, yeah, 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 I fell believe off. that. I was I'm watching done. Digimon. It wasn't a bad series. It, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It was, it was dope. I like to just see how powerful they can get because it was like, it was way more powerful than Pokemon. Pokemon was they were way more powerful. They were reality yeah. warpers, brother. Yeah. I tell people, listen, are you just saying, listen. You even gotta watch season one. Just watch season two, three, or four. Like you literally have a virus that was created to the elite Digimon, and it got brought from the Digimon world into the real world, mm -hmm. and then it just taken over the planet. And I'm just like, dude, like, and, and see, and it's not even by Digimon creation. That's by humans who made that. So mm -hmm. technically, so technically, it was because 
they didn't even know what they were doing. Let's be real. They, they didn't intentionally <laughs> make something to destroy the world. But let's be real. Humans, I told y'all once again, a story about a computer or a program that was taking shit over. I'm telling you, dude, this is real. I'm like, dude, y'all had to, and the crazy thing is y'all had to let kids take care of this shit. <laughs> y'all couldn't clean up your own goddamn mess. And I'm like, yo, and man, yo, yo, as far as I'm concerned, those kids should be rich for life for saving the planet. Y'all shouldn't that's mess right. with them. Y'all should just pay them. Y'all should pay 10 year old, those 12 year old kids freaking like a million dollars each. So they saved like the freaking Ender's planet. Game. You know, they seen that movie <laughs> called Ender's Game? Yeah, I remember Ender's Game. That's what that uh, sounds like his when name? you said uh, that. Morrison Scott Card. That's that's the writer, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, mm. yeah, yeah. But He's yeah, the creator man. of Ender's Game. So yeah, so like Japan, it's it's Gucci out here, man. The food, I'm not gonna lie. Let me see. It's large variety of foods here. I think I like the desserts more so here in Japan. Um, it's good, flavorful, good sample, good size. Not too much, not too little, just right. Um, the noodles, I need I that. Got, I got a little bias. I'm not gonna lie. The ramen's okay here. Um, but it, it, I'm just telling you, there's levels to this. Um, in Philly, I'm not lying, bro. I think the best noodles I've ever had was in Philly. And the reason why I say that is because there's a Chinese spot in Chinatown. And don't get me wrong, Chinatown actually got some official stuff too. Just because it's in America, don't think the Chinese people don't. Yeah, yeah, no, stuff. it's good. I'm not shitting on Chinatown. Yeah, um, I heard good things about it. I went to this one spot and the guy they actually got hand rolled noodles so those take about like six to nine hours to prep the noodles so they gotta like hang a little hang and dry and stuff like that right yeah and they have a different texture to them and they're different and they're thicker and it's just different when you got the regular machine made noodles that have been dried out for so long and then you know they sit in the packaging and then it's it's not the same bro the noodles that were already made that day of that shit is so good, it's stupid. So like, I went from eating like that to going out to here. And they'll use like some fresh ingredients when it comes to the topic and stuff, but the noodles, those is like the same ones you get in noodles packs. So that's right. what I'm kind of hurting a little bit. Some of them have better quality, some good taste, but you cannot beat hand, hand roll. It, you, you can't touch it. It just, <laughs> it hit different. So <laughs> I'm not trying to take away from Japan and their ramen noodles, ramen noodles are good. If we never had what I had prior to that, you can be like, oh, this is good as shit. Like I said, I have a little bias only because of that. But otherwise, noodles is good out here too. Um, what else? Dessert, like I said, is the best thing. Sushi, of course, it's the same. It's as in America as in here. Um, I did have the, uh, what's that called? The uh, uh, wangu, wangu, the uh, the beef. I forgot what you call it. It's like basically it's a very, very saturated, fatty. Um, oh, I know beef. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah one that, of those, yeah. That is very okay. Good. That is really good. I, um, you probably got excited flavorful. with that one. Yeah, that one's very good. It's for me. You can go to a restaurant, but they will charge you out the ass for it. It's best to buy it in the supermarket yourself. You get it for half price. Because mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. at a restaurant, you're paying seventy bucks for that. But if you buy it at the house, you're paying somewhere between thirty to forty bucks for it yourself, and then you cook it yourself. Because the restaurant's gonna charge you from at the lowest price 70 bucks and then it goes up from there to 90 to 120 and it's just like i'm just gonna buy this and make it myself this is ridiculous it's not that it's not worth it because that's another thing too like everything here has a pedigree there's levels to everything here in japan so like from like okay who has the best tea okay well who has the best this and it's like you're gonna find specialty places that are prestige and that's why like i told you in the back from earlier i said yo once you get your little niche little area and you become a name for yourself in your community wherever you're stationed at wherever you're at if you're if everyone who knows you outside of that area i talked about before you're famous People are gonna be coming from all over the world to see that spot. That's how good it is, because word of mouth travels. Okay. So that's right. what I'm saying. Like, there's levels to it, bro. It's if you're if you heard about it, it is good, legit. It's a good spot to go to. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. The line's long to get there, but it's gonna be good though. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, man. Yo, is there, is there anything like the freaking uh, the gamer lines where all these gamers got to get up to get a new game on Black Friday or something like that? Oh shoot, man. I think since is it like that COVID, long. No. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh. So, yes. Yes. Yes, like six flags long. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> yo, yeah, you're right. You better make it at your house. 
<laughs> so 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 I can infer that my that my lady would be good at cooking this and then I should just let her cook it then going to the it, restaurant. Okay. Also gotta be fair, it depends on the day. So on a weekday you're safe. Um, on a Week weekend, okay. yeah, on a weekday you're safe. On a Sunday, you're fucked. You might as well get a reservation. <laughs> I'm just being for real, bro. You're not getting oh, nowhere on a Sunday. Out. <laughs> Sunday be packed everywhere, every even this little sushi spot in front of my house just packed. I'm yeah. like, Jesus, I don't cook for nothing on a Sunday, bro. Everybody come on and eat. <laughs> so right, that's just... how it be though. Oh man, that's that's crazy, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I said what I laughed too hard. I worked on my uh, I did I did a workout just the other day, and I'm I worked the hell out of my stomach to make sure I wasn't going. I'm losing anything I gained or whatever. Trust me, I'm. It stings, but it's not like really, really bad. But it stings, but I'm fine. It's just that whenever I laugh too hard like that, because you said like, bro, like you said you effed on Sunday, I just laughed. Bro. <laughs> it's funny. Oh man. But okay, man. So you know some good cuisine spots, and you've tasted a few of their um, egg, 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 exotic uh, trays. Like okay, mm-hmm. that's good, man. Um, trust me, man. I'm looking forward to the food when I get over there. Trust me. Because oh, whatever they're eating over there is what's keeping them alive for so long. Let's just keep that Ooh. straight. Time out, time out, time out. All right, out. go ahead, correct me. Educate right, me. So, I said something okay, wrong. Yo, so, oh, uh, <laughs> that's a misconception. Um, okay. Just to let you know, the food is not necessarily healthier. Um, the biggest thing they have a problem with, and it's all throughout Asia, because you understand, it's like a supply and demand thing. 80% mm-hmm. of the food in Japan is imported. 80% of the food is imported. Um, okay. When it comes to what kind of ingredients they have in their food, um, I think there was, I want to say like 12 things that they banned or 40 or something. I can't remember. I just know that our food technically is a little more safer than their food, believe it or not. Um, but that's only because Japan looks at it like, they look at it differently when it comes to the safety. It's either by measurement or by uh yeah, it's like by measurement or if it's infused with another ingredient, then it's fine. For us, if we find a certain ingredient inside the food, it's just the whole thing is bad, period. There is no a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Nah, there's no pass in America. So we're actually more strict than Japan. Japan is like, how much of it is in there? Is it, is it edible still? Okay, cool. It's all good to go. So it's a little bit different. And I would say okay, the number one killer and uh, the number one killer in Japan is actually diabetes. But that's also because of the sugars. Remember, all rice. those desserts. Yeah, the desserts and the, the rice and the noodles. All those foods, the carbs, those carbs turn to sugars. You know what I'm saying? So all that. People let me know about the diabetes have, thing. That helps me out now. Yeah, so all the extra carbs that people take in, people are not saying like sugar does damage to the blood. You know, like you see what sugar does to your teeth. Imagine what it does to your blood, okay? <laughs> People gotta understand that that is a real mm. thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I think that's starting to slowly come out, like, because of COVID and stuff like that. My apologies, I don't mean to say COVID, but I know that's mm. coming from the man. Yeah, but um, because of that, the Modella, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, ever since that came out, there's been a lot more health things, health channels trying to get people educated. I got educated on some stuff too, and I realized I said, like, "Oh, okay, so that's what's going on with my body." And it's a huge difference. When I start changing up sugars and stuff, and then started doing research. Even here, my my blood, actually, my blood pressure went up higher when I came to Japan. I had to figure out what was going on. I said, "Dang!" Like, I still work out, and I thought I was getting healthier. I do have way more rice in my diet, and then I looked it up. That's what it, it is. Just, the yeah. starch. Yeah, so I got way more rice, and that's when my blood pressure started going up. And I was like, I started, I'm like, started having like first stage hypertension. And I was like, oh hell no! So I started cutting the rice. Hypertension, out. damn, bro! Like, dude, that's some like the wow. first signs of like yeah, the signs of have hypertension. So I was okay. like, yeah, we're going to start cutting all that stuff down. Cause like, I'm not, I'm too. You're gonna have that. to. So I had no problem with that. I just got to be more mindful of it. I can't like that's nothing too. Seven Eleven. Is uh is a blessing <laughs> and a curse. <laughs> <That's so crazy. laughs> because it has they have everything there and it's so cheap. Like they have so to much buy your food? food. Yes, bro. Like you could just so, so it's not like a standard of- gas station or some shit like that. It actually has like full on Yeah, like meals and stuff. Like I'm like you can get a full meal out the thing for nothing, bro. I'm like Let me ask let me ask you. Oh man, I shouldn't even ask that. Oh, because I won't I won't be respectful. That's okay. Did your did your wife shop at eleven uh, 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 seven eleven to get like nah. um groceries and stuff from there? 
No, no, no. She goes to the actual grocery store and stuff. Okay. I just go there for like little cheap stuff before I go to work because it's real convenient. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the whole I thing. Gotcha. It's actual because I was saying, dude, they're selling like meat and actual lettuce and numbers. I'm like, okay, bro, you got it. Yeah, they do. You got me. They, they got they got a little tiny, but it's mostly for uh, noodles. So the little ingredients they have, so they have like the separate noodle packs. So they sell vegetables, right. they sell little slab meats, little chicken, some eggs and stuff like that. But all that's supposed to be like topping for your noodles for the most part. I mean, you can, they, they make sandwiches, of course, like lunch meats like that too, and cheeses. They, they got a little bit of everything there. They got tomatoes and it's a little, little something, a little something, something. Nothing big, but it's way more convenient than I've seen in the States. It's, it's cheap. It's stupid cheap. That's the thing that really sells it. Hmm. Okay. Well, hey man, listen, I'm taking notes of this. Trust me, I'm gonna be watching this and just taking down multiple bullet points and just tell me remind me of that. Cause mm-hmm. um, I would say I would say you could you kind of created your own diet from uh from after being out there for a while. Yeah. And that means you. So I mean, so I would say you have a list of what you would get, right? Oh yeah. Or eat that day. Okay, I got you. And, and I'll say just, so both you and your wife cook it? Uh, I technically, I'm the cook in the house. My wife, she does cook, but I'm the, I'm the better cook. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. Me, me, yeah. I, I'm, okay, guys, I'm not going to lie. As much as I say I'm a good cook, I don't, I don't feel like cooking every freaking day, dead ass. And if I do do it, it's going to be, it's going to be pre-made the day before. That way I can just reheat that sucker and then just go to town on it. And the day that I do feel like it, which is the day after, because I'll take a, Cause what I'll do, I'll make enough for two days, and mm-hmm. then by the th- and then by the time we get to the second day, I'm like, alright, man, let me get off work early as I can, start cooking that sucker, get in the shower, and then uh, just sleep, and then after that, I already have something for the next two days after. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll do, because it's just like I I can't I can't <laughs> especially if you're working and doing all that, bro. That's why I said like like ladies need to understand like th- th- there's a reason why I would like. Want a lady to cook, like have more knowledgeable of cooking stuff than me. That way, like I said, because if there's a dish she needs off, if there's a dish she needs off to cook, I got you, baby. I knock that off. I got some I want. I got some I want to cook too. Let me knock that out. Simple mm-hmm. enough. Now you don't touch the ridge. I do that. No, no, I. It's my day. <laughs> That's what I do. That. I lay down the grill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I, I ain't gonna say that out loud, but I'm like, I, I do the, I do the grill, sweetheart. You're like like you like, like like you got you got the other station. This is my station right here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, stuff like that. But um, and man, I'm glad you you figured you figured it out for the food thing, and also where you're gonna shop, get your get your quote unquote uh, goods at. That's that, mm-hmm. that's a that's really good on top stuff. I like that. And I, I and I guess uh, the thing I'm gonna ask you next is um, what uh since you are living in Japan, like currently, what is your occupation over there right now? Oh, military. Uh, oh, you're still military, military got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Military police. Military police, bro? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, dude, that's what's up. First time I just hear brothers being stationed over there for the most part. First time I actually heard of uh, just being a military policeman. That's yeah, a yeah, yeah. that's a new one. Okay. Um, And I would say, do you like your job? Ooh, like is a hard term. No, I'm so, <laughs> I want to say... Yeah, it is say, a hard like, term. <laughs> I don't want to say like or dislike. Uh, I pretty much tolerate it. There's good days, there's bad days. But I don't try to... I don't take any day too personal. I take it in good strides. You know what I'm saying? Good faith. Um, every day, is my mission is like, it's got to come home. You know, my mission is to come home. Everyone come home safe. And it's a good day. You know what I'm saying? Paperwork is a pain in the ass. Traffic accidents are a pain in the ass. But these things happen every day. So I'm kind of used to it. Um, the people I work with, I'm just blessed. You know what I'm saying? I got people who aren't knuckleheads. They're all good people. We all communicate and well-managed. We're a small team, so it's easy to manage each other. It's like a small family, so it's all good. Um, the hours are a pain in the ass, but I've been doing this for like 15 years. So hours ain't nothing to me no more. You know what I'm saying? Um, Every, every station, every duty station I go to is different. Whether I'm standing or I'm sitting in a car or whatever, it, it, it all is the same to me. Um, I got good, excellent people skills. So a lot of people, <laughs> they end up talking to me and don't realize I'm a cop. And they're like, when soon as they have a cop, they're like, oh, you're a cop? I'm like, yo, I'm, yo, chill. <laughs> chill. It, ain't, it ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? I'm still people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I got, this is my job. Okay, my dude, this is, it's just a job. I, I did the day, like, I'm just trying to do my job and go home. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, my mission is to go home, right. bro. <laughs> like, it ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like you. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a little more responsibility in terms of trying to keep peace in order. But otherwise, look, man, I am I make mistakes too. 
I'm not looking for perfection out here. I'm not trying to look for work, okay? Unnecessary. Yeah. I'm not harassing I, I mean, him. I can't do that stuff. It's too much. I'm like, I'm just being realistic and being a real human. Like, how y'all guys look at things is how I look at things. I don't look at things differently. If I see something that looks like crazy, yeah. I'm going to go check it. But if it ain't looking like nothing, I keep moving. I don't say nothing until someone says something. Again, I'm not trying to necessarily look for work unless it's like we're on some alert phase or it's like, yo, we got some things that are coming down, so we got to be more on our square right now. And I understand exactly. that. Otherwise, for the most part, it just be chill. <laughs> and that's why, you know, most customers, I call them customers, but they're just other people out in town. When I see them, they see me, they usually be good. You know what I'm saying? Even if they did something real fucked up, <laughs> when I get my hands <laughs> on them, they be chill because I mm. treat them as a human being still. I um, I don't lie to them. I let them know what's right. going to happen. Yo, this is going to happen. All right. I got you going here. You're going to take a seat. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna come in here later and let you know what's up. This is what you're in for, right? And then like, okay, so is, am I in trouble? Like, look, look, right now, all we got you, like, it's not the judge execution. I'm not judging. I can only tell them this is what we got, this is what we did. You know what I'm saying? And if I got evidence on you, I'll let you know I got some evidence on you. Now, some people don't lie to you and say, yeah, we, we know you did it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Reason why I don't do that is because if I tell someone the truth about the matter, they're more comfortable to open up. You know what I'm saying? If I'm lying to them, well, now I got to try to keep up with a lie. And then once I'm figured out, now they get quiet and they won't say shit to me. Now, the whole thing is, if I want to get to the truth, I'm not going to use a lie to get to the truth. I'm going to use the truth to get to the truth. I don't have to go through no back doors and be sneaky with it. I can just talk to them face to face and tell them what it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they talk. Most of the time they do talk. They ain't like no sometimes. Mm-hmm. Most of the time they do talk. And um, the last girl I had, she was shoplifting or whatever. And when it was all said and done, I told her, I said, yo, I, I don't judge you. I, I ain't, look, I get it. You know, she just had her kid and stuff. So the whole situation looked kind of bad. And she had her, her infant with her, three-month infant with her when she was shoplifting. So her man had to come by and, yeah, that, that whole situation was kind of like, <laughs> we, we, I told her, I said, yo, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, stress and stuff. I, I'm not here to judge you. you. You you did what you did, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? This is going to happen. And this is what you can do, step forward, I'm saying? You don't got to omit to nothing. You ain't got to say nothing to me, you know what I'm saying? Here are your resources. I suggest that you utilize them, all right? Talk to you right. to talk to and get some better information for yourself, all right? Because I'm not here to judge and execute you and stuff. So once she felt comfortable, she was good. She cried a little bit, but then she was smiling and she left. I do you know why I do this particularly to people? Because I still got to see these people every day. So ain't nothing ever going to be personal between me and these people. Because I still got to walk out here. I got, you know what I'm saying? People, you do stuff that people take personal, they're going to take it personal. I still got to go they home. Are. People follow me home and stuff like that. Like, I, nah, I don't bring no drama to my house because someone got a personal grudge for me. I don't take nothing personal. At the end of the day, it's just business. And that's why yeah. I, I got no problem being honest. It is what it is. I mean, much respect to you for your uh, resiliency and also your fortitude in doing things like that. Like because most people don't have that kind of thing, and it's kind of like uh, with 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 kind of like the job you have it comes with a lot of stress, comes with a lot of um, nonsense, bullshit slash like um, just a uh, oh, quote unquote enemies. I would say. Like, you got a bunch of adversaries coming at you, and the thing is, you got to beat those adversities a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh, and trust me, my father did it for so long, and it, trust me, it's, it's crazy that he's still here. <laughs> I say crazy <laughs> that he's still, I'm talking about right in, right in the head, number one, right in, and, and two, he's still alive, and I'm, which I'm glad he is. It's just... <laughs> I've, I have a shirt for you. Like I have a threshold now. I'm like I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I'm not saying there's some lady. It's just like I couldn't. Do, that's why I couldn't be an officer. I'm mean, like, no guys. I'm just let me be the guy that just works hard, really hard, and then just not bring my bullshit to home. Mm. Chill and just recharge. Like, gotcha. I'll be honest. I tell people like I say. That's it. I said there's a reason why I'm actually sometimes glad that I don't have a lady to come back to right now or anything like that. Just because. I mean, I just take my shower, lay in the bed, and just lay the fuck down and just recharge. And what? And, and if I get up super, and if I get up really, really early, I'll just get up and start studying, doing some stuff, lay down for another hour, and go get up and go to work. I'll do some stuff like that. 
Mm. But that, that's what the truck, that's what I'm just working on building on myself. But I just have to leave work at work and then just be chill at home. Mm. Don't ever bring that shit home. This is your sanctuary. Like I said, my paradise of peace, bro. Chill. I tell anybody, I said, you popping off with that shit? I will knock you the fuck out. Get the hell out of here. Like yes, I said, can't anybody come to my house to bring any bullshit? I'm gonna let you in my house to be anyway if you're acting all crazy. So that's just not happening. So I get where you're coming from in that regards. And how 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 I'm gonna have things set up, like simple. It's just that needs to be that needs to be known. Like like I said, let's set your boundaries, what you have, what you want, what you're trying to do. Whenever you're together with someone, or if you're just like like I said, you have three freaking roommates. I'm the fourth one. <laughs> one of the ones. But we got a system and it works here. And we chill. When actually one of them is about to get back from work now and then sleep, and then I'm about to when he gets here early in the morning, I'm already gone. So he got technically two cats got the whole house to the sun to sleep while we while they get ready to leave in the afternoon and we coming back from the afternoon. So you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's just a constant in and out of things. Except on Sundays now. Mm -hmm. Only time we see each other is that day. Sometimes. But uh but like I said, if you have a system and it's working, then just do it. But also with the stress of a job that you particularly do, you don't want everyone to bring that to, to your uh, place that you sleep at, man. Mm-hmm. Because I ain't trying to go to bed angry. Definitely. And that's Definitely. rare. Because if, if I go to bed angry, I'm like, all right, man. You ain't sleeping. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, my baby be like, well, like, well, like she, she be like, what my husband at? I'm like, I'm in the, I'm the, the couch, we hurt. I'm just be looking, looking like this, like, fuck. Mm -mm. Well, I've actually slept with that one time and it was the worst feeling ever. I was, so when I went to bed and angry, I was like, fuck this. Mm. I was like, I can't do it. I gotta do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some some to like <laughs> knock myself out or some shit like that. I was just like, I I, I can't do it, man. That's how it's crazy. And and I understand what the stress that you do. So first of all I wanna say congratulations, brother, that you actually do a job like that. Much respect to you. And uh, you got more balls than I do to probably do that because <laughs> it takes a lot of self control to do a job like that, and not everybody's built for it. Because not true. many people that because not everybody has the, I would say their heart and mind are in the right place when they do that job. Sometimes, mm -hmm. some people are, some people aren't. Mm -hmm. And that's not just some stigma from America and all that bullshit nonsense, but it's just it's true. It's just like you got to get a better control on your emotions and things like that. Because for me, I know I couldn't handle it. Like, there's no way my nerves were built for that shit. There's a reason why my father said, don't go into that. <laughs> he was warning me. And I'm like, he was, and he was right. So I'm like, I never pursued it. Mm -hmm. so, do something else with your degree. Do something else. <laughs> like, if you was behind a computer desk, I would love you no different. Just, yeah. Just don't take, don't, just, just don't stick a fork in someone's eye. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, I, I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. Oh man, <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now. This is fucking pain in the ass. Oh man, yeah, I couldn't do it. Like I said, much more power and more respect to you for doing it, man. Um, I guess, like I said, we'll get into the next question. Actually, I would say, um, before, like I said, because I think after this will answer your marriage question. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say this, uh, brother. Uh, how, how, uh, how are you spending your days? Just you know, just working. Things like that, spending time with the wife, things like that. I would say an average day if I'm not working, like today's my day off. So actually after this interview, I gotta go take care of my car taxes. I got real taxes to pay for both my vehicles. Then after that Don't worry, so we won't keep you on here that long, I promise. That's cool. <laughs> uh, then after that, uh I'm gonna go to the gym. After the gym, I'm gonna go grocery shopping, and then cook dinner, cook whatever, get ready for uh, tomorrow, wash my laundry. Um, and then just chill out because it's the last day I gotta work tomorrow. Um, but I work nights, so I gotta stay up all night. <laughs> oh, um, shit. yeah, it's cool, it's whatever. Um, then, um, work days work. Is it chill in the nighttime? I wanted to ask you, I don't want to cut you off, brother, but is it chill in the nighttime as Actually, opposed to yeah, the morning? It yeah, it is. It's real chill. It's not that bad. I mean, you got traffic like you got like everywhere else, traffic because everyone has to go to work in the morning. Uh, besides that, though, it's, it's chill. It's not too, not too noisy. At least where I'm at, I'm chill where I'm at. And it's it's breezy. It's breezy. It's not bad. It's kind of chill. At least where I'm at, it's pretty chill. I mean, in the city, which I'm not, I'm not in the city. I'm on like a suburban area. Oh, suburban area is good. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm a suburban area of the city. I'm pretty sure it is loud. And That's where you want to be. <laughs> nah, that's where my wife want to be. I don't want to be in no city. City's too much. I can't, I can't <laughs> no, no, that's, city, that's city, suburban. That's a suburban. Oh, that's oh, a okay. suburban area. <laughs> not, not city. Even listen, <laughs> even though when I go to Tokyo, and I'm gonna enjoy. I'm gonna enjoy all the sights and everything over there. I ain't never coming back. <laughs> I, I think I'm with the listen. These country folks in America have convinced me to live in a country area. So that's gonna be in Japan too. My brothers live in the country area. That us. Like right Nagoya, or place, places like so yeah, some of the places that are just around that area. Mm. I mean Kyoto would be nice, but that's not that's not country to area. But <laughs> Kyoto is very uh, old fashioned. I kind of like it. It's like the most quietest city. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, dead so, serious? Yeah, that's a real chill, like that. relaxed city. That city is very relaxed. Very okay. very relaxed. That's okay. Okay. I gotta, I gotta uh, type that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also the history of that place. Like, remember, I don't know if you know this, but Kyoto was the old capital of uh, Japan. Japan. Um, yeah, I remember they, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why it's like it used to be real busy, and now it's real quiet because like uh, I forgot who the ruler was, but he basically took his people up north, and all the talent came with him to make a new established capital. So that's why like Kyoto is too much a shell of what it used to be, but it's still has all its old quirks and old buildings and everyone's wearing kimonos and stuff it's mad cool but it's like stuff back in time but um i actually hmm. i went out there too i went out there in my kimono you know what i'm saying i, I was looking like oh oh yeah oh yeah the mel, the, oh yeah man, man the, the mel kimono i actually can't wait to uh, wear that i was looking like a samurai out there piece man I hey man I listen i want to look like hey, listen <laughs> i would actually do that dead ass man that's actually one of my things to wear like a, a male version of that and then just yeah. chill and it's just like you look like you look like one of those lures <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> I was legit looking like one, bro. I might mm -hmm. happen because like I didn't even have like the normal one. I had the real formal one. You know what I'm saying? I had the, oh, little, the formal one? Yeah, it had a little uh, I don't wanna say I had the I had like several little ropes on. I go like it's almost like at least three layers deep, three or four layers. And when they tie that saltro on it, a little belt man, dude. You have perfect posture <laughs> when you're sitting because that's what like you don't so like you're tight. hunching over like, it, like you can't yeah. hunch. It's impossible, bro. Like oh. you are stiff as a board. Yo, like, yo, yo, what is that? A male court? What is that? A male corset? Uh, a corset? You can say yeah. that, but it's more like a sauch or something like that. Sauch. Okay, bro, I got what you mean. I know the sauch. Yeah, so okay. I was like, dang, this thing is tight, and I say, yo, I know this is for photography purpose, but yeah, loosen up a little bit. I'm gonna be in this thing for a couple of hours. He's like, okay, look, I'm gonna loosen a little bit. I can't like, do Jesus it. Jesus Christ, bro. I can't breathe. Because the thing was, I could breathe when I'm standing up. As soon as I sit down, I'm just. <gasps> I can't a hard breathe. time breathing? I'm loosen this up real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, loosen that up. But like... <laughs> I can't even breathe sitting down. And it was way worse nah, from my wife. My wife had about nine layers on, bro. Nine tight layers she, on her, she bro. Was she covered in a freaking. Was she covered in a cloth monster type? Dog, every time I saw, like, dog, every time I saw her, right, I thought they were like done, and then they go grab another belt and wrap it around. I'm like, God uh -huh. damn, what's gonna put how on that? Like... Gotta... I mean, well, the OB, well, the OB for the woman, I don't think it's that long. I actually, actually did a bunch of couple of videos on that. I think it's it's pretty long, but it's not like, wait, how many times do they go around her waist is what I'm asking? Because remember, sometimes they'll go around enough times, and yeah. then it goes in a certain to a times around the like stomach and waist. And yeah. then you push it down, and then it, you tie it in the knot into a bow. It was like, let me see. So the, the first layer, it looks like an apprentice type, like the underwear, basically. It's like an all white thing you put on, right? So you got that as the first layer, and they tied it up nice and tight. And then after that, they put on like a second, like a clothes layer, like a normal one. And they tighten that up real quick. Then they put on the fancy robe, right? And after they put the fancy robe on, they put that and they tighten that up. Yeah. Then they put on this girdle. The girdle, did you talk about? That goes on top of all that shit you just said. So it's like this pink girdle. That goes on there. Then they put the belt over top of the girdle. Then they grab the fancy one, the, the actual bow one, and tie that around here. And then one more. They get a rope and they tie the rope. It was like a little tiny little decoration on it. And they tie the rope around that. So it was like, I was like, damn, babe, you got like seven to nine layers on your stomach, bro. It's just like, and the way she was walking too, man. Like, you know how Japanese women walk in a dress? Yeah. Said, they have no choice but to walk like that. They're not doing it on purpose, bro. They have no choice. They can't, they can't move. 
Like, my wife was like, babe, I can't move but two inches. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> hold up, one second. Hey, guys, and guys, to give you a hint of what he's talking about, I will screen share this with y'all. Hold on. I'll make sure it's appropriate. Don't worry. If not, I'll, I'll trim this. I'll trim this part out. Don't worry. Go ahead. That, was, that was my wife. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. You married, brother. Do, do your business. I always tell people yeah, that. Yeah, she's just waking up right now and stuff. Oh no, we're looking at. I'm pretty sure it's not that one. But... Now you see that first one, that white one right there. That's the first layer right there. That I was talking about. It's like right an here? underarm. Yes, yeah, the underwear. Yeah, it's like that's that's the first yeah. layer. First layer she puts on, and then it starts right to go on to like another joint, and then another joint, and then you get the fancy one on top of that. But then okay. you start putting the belts and the girdles and stuff on. It's just like there's no end in sight for it, bro. I was just like, yo, you really keep going. There's no stopping it. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Yo, man, the, the, those ones be like those low, like, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I'm like, oh, damn. Maybe, maybe we should go through a, cha maybe I, t and I, I thought to myself, maybe me and my girl shouldn't go through a, a traditional Japanese wedding, because you got to wear all that stuff, and it's, it's crazy. Unless it's oh, like two layers, then it's not a problem. Another thing, so I'll tell you this, I was actually shocked that, um, that took the pictures during, like, the winter time. And I was just like, bro, I pray to God this thing keeps me warm or something like that. Oh, you're warm. You're very warm. Because, <laughs> like, when you wear it, it doesn't seem like much. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, how am I staying warm in just this, you know what I'm saying? It don't, it feels, it don't, it don't look like nothing. But I will say your hands will get cold. Mm -hmm. My hands was cold because they was exposed. Of course. Everything else was good. I was like, yo, this is really keeping me warm, bro. Like, this is mad dope. So, like, <laughs> it was just like cause it looks like it wouldn't keep you like warm, you know what I'm saying? But it actually does keep you really warm. Though. I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. This works. I like this. Yeah, and like I said, I look forward to wearing that when I go to the hot springs or the public baths, things like that. I'm actually looking, looking forward to that hot spring personally for me. The public yes. baths I'm looking forward to, but I mean like hot spring is what I really want to just go into that first before I do the public bath. It's because you see too many of them in anime, you see too many of them in freaking movies. I need to go in the one. I don't yeah. give a, listen, listen, I tell people, listen, I don't care if I'm here with somebody or by myself. I don't give a damn. I'm going in there. I mean, I, I tell everybody, just leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you this. Hold up. So, right, there is a caveat to the onsen. What you have to do mm -hmm. is, like, well, you have to get washed up before you even go into the public. You have to get washed up before you so, go in. I know the customer of that. Also, Trust me, I know all that. You don't want to have tattoos. Yeah, I, I know about that. Um, okay. I don't have any okay. on my arm or right here. Yeah, I have one yeah, on my yeah, back. Yeah. But 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 the difference for me is um, there are certain ones you can go to and some ones yes, you can't. Yes, exactly. So the, one, so the only one, the ones that you can go to, go to those ones. Yes. The ones that you can't go to, you, of course, don't go to those. Yeah, and, yeah. And some and some, I think some public baths are okay, but I but not all. Yes, exactly. And, and so I know I know, but not trust me. I know why mm -hmm. why they think that because yeah, they think yeah, you're yeah. part of the yakuza. Yeah, yeah. Simple enough. Gang affiliation. Yeah, they've been trying to yeah anti gang affiliation since 2000 really so it, and they still like believe in it heavily even though it's like other forms and other ways that people could become more gangster quote unquote so but yeah and you feel just people with more tattoos to, are coming up yeah Yakuza yeah, is not what it used to be anymore man they're pretty much phased out people think they're still relevant they're, there's other groups that took taken over there's another uh, uh, gang out here right now that, that does things Yakuza is pretty much old school like very old school, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they like, I know what you mean. yeah, yeah. So there's an older group. Like I think the probably youngest member, probably in their fifties or late forties. There's not, there's no one young who's Yakuza, bro. They in the oh. other groups now. Okay. But that's you know what I'm saying. That's just something you learn about here. Or there, you know what I'm saying? And that's nothing too. I'm over here in Yokosuka, Yakuza, and these boys they be hugging the block out here, bro. Like they legit, they legit <laughs> up the line. They be on the block, bro. And I'm just like, oh, look at this. They like, you could tell me party game. Look at how in the block. Yo, everybody there out here just watching, just chilling, bro. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They really be on the block, but they go on the oh, block man. from looking for like customers because they in the prostitution ring and shit. So you could tell, like, you know, they the pimps. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> so it, it's just <laughs> it's funny. Thinking, they they be the right dudes. They be in front of the gambling spots. So they be in front of gambling spots. They might be in front of the massage parlors or whatever. But they just looking for Johns. You know what I'm saying? But not I, like Americans. You know what? I, I should I should ask. You know what? I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little submission for the fans since you've been there. Mm. Are those massage parlor places all that? 
Did it do like a really great job if you're like, if your body's all messed up? I, I got to ask that question. All right, so there's a few different types. So there's a, there's a few different types of massage parlors here. You get the massage parlors that are legit, and you got the ones that are not legit, okay? Of course, I'm not going to say not and legit And you got the ones. ones that are in between, meaning they legit, and in you pay them something, <laughs> they might do something more, all right? Okay, I know which ones that, those are. Yeah. <laughs> I know which ones those are. So, That's funny. The only reason so, why I asked that is because you told me the in between ones are probably like they're good, but then if you but but if you want extra service, you got to pay such and such. Yeah, 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 mean. yeah. And guys, we're dancing around this for a reason, but you can't understand the language we're talking about. But mm-hmm. some of us, some of you do. I know grown men who 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 watch certain things. You know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's been talked about on YouTube channels. So I know you're not stupid. You know what a yeah. masseuse is. Simple enough. <laughs> I just helped you. I, I just said it what it was. I didn't tell you what they did. That's up for you to figure that out. You got Google. You got the internet. You know what you do. do. Um, yeah, one of my one of my homies before he got married went to one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, at least before he met his girl. He's, I think he's. Have you run into him in Japan? Let me know. His name is his name is uh, Ty. Okay. And you're, you guys are not gonna know what his last name is because. No one's gonna follow him. No, you me. don't wanna. Yeah, you don't wanna. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's his nickname. That's what we call yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want Doc. Yeah, yeah. We, nickname. We nickname. We call him Ty. T T A I. But yeah, but yeah. Before he before he got married, met his lady and everything. Uh, he went to one of those places. He well, he went. Okay, so the first time he went there, he went to a professional, and he said, "Yo, man, I feel good as hell, bro. Like they got all oh, my freaking yeah. kinks out of my neck." So he went to one of them, and the second time he went to a different place somewhere in freaking I don't know if it was Osaka, or or if it was the site. <laughs> but <laughs> he went over there he, and he realized, yo, man, I just noticed that like two two of the coworkers are good as hell right here. And then uh, and then um and then he purposed so so he didn't know what he was ordering. He just knew like, yeah, so you do the whole full body, you know, get my whole body straight like the other guy, like uh, that guy, the other girl did. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What he didn't what he didn't know, he thought happy ending was like I get the full treatment of everything, right? He didn't know what the hell that meant. So he, he did it. He didn't, expect, he, didn't, he, he didn't expect whatever it happened to happen. And he was like, yo, I woke up, bro. bro. He, he just told me, bro, I woke up. So I walked out more than with just a good a good freaking um, uncreamed and hinged body, bro. I walked out satisfied as fuck. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he told me. And I, I, I laughed. I, like, I already knew what he meant. I, I, got, I was dead ass laughing. I was like, bro, <laughs> no. how'd you not know what you was getting when you said that? I said, no, the, man. I mean, well, no, no. He knew a little bit of Japanese at the time, but he knew he, there was one word that he misconstrued. He didn't understand mm. what that that one word meant. Gotcha. Like, oh, okay, 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 okay. But yeah, he was. But, but trust me, he was just like, "Hey, man, listen, I'm glad. It's like, hey, listen, I'm glad I can say for the culture that I that I'm glad to experience that, but I ain't gonna do that again. It was it was awesome. It was whatever. But I'm I'm trying to get married. But eh, hey, can nobody can nobody say? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do something down here, but I'm like, you ain't got to tell nobody, bro. That's your business. That's what I told yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, I will say this. At least you know it was legit, though, right? Yeah, by accident. <laughs> but whatever, man. And then, that's what he told say, me. The joint I had, let me see, not out here. Actually, so I, saw I, I went to was in Taiwan. That shit killed me, man. That shit is painful. I, I turned out Chinese massage is painful, bro. I mean, Chinese? it's like it was Chinese massage. That oh hell is, no! That shit is painful, bro. That is. What the hell they do? Like jump on you? <laughs> I mean, they can, but it was. Oh just, hell no! It was. It was like they was trying to hurt me. But the thing is, when you got like, cause I'm a, I work out and stuff, so I went there for my leg. You saw all over, yeah. Yeah, right. and he and he he was going in my legs so hard, bro. I got my wife got the video recorded that you want, like, because she was no, laughing. Why your wife recording that shit, bro? Cause, well, she had to. She had to. You know what I'm saying? Because it was too funny for her to see her man in pain like a bitch. Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 I, I mean, it's for respect when I say this. Your wife isn't secretly a sadist, is she? No. Or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Good. 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 Why would you want to see you in pain? <laughs> That's weird. Because I never no. The thing is, I never like. She always try to tickle me. I never laugh. I never do nothing. So I never react. So okay, she, she wants. She wanted a reaction out of you. Yeah, she wanted to see me react. Reaction. And she saw my fist on my. Like, she go and try to tickle you. Didn't laugh. You should just give her a fake laugh and then she'll stop. <laughs> no, nah, because that just gets at her least to do it. No, nah, because more. Because she's the opposite of me. So for me, I just really got to 
poke her and she's like, ah, ah, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, I barely <laughs> touched you. I barely. So she's what the total she super, opposite of me. She's very what, she's sensitive. sensitive to the touch? Yeah. Oh, she, damn. Yeah, she feels sensitive. <laughs> All right. I mean, hey, hey, and, and hey, everybody for the record, you heard it from him, man. Um, Taiwanese women are probably sensitive to the touch, brother. So be careful how you grip something, is what I'm going to tell you. Because <laughs> that's crazy. Like, because I had the opposite with my ex, where, like, you know, she's black, she was black and everything. Mm-hmm. So, my fan in here, right? So, worry, she was never in this room. Back when I lived with my parents, I remember she came to visit one time, and I'm, I realized I'm like, it's barely cold in my room. What's up with you? Oh, it's too cold in here. I was like, what? <laughs> Girl, it's 81, 88 degrees outside. You telling me you cold in here? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, well, and, and, and I thought to myself, I married this woman. I know one thing we're going to argue about. It's fuck the fucking thermostat. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm talking about, listen, everything could be bunk sway fine. It's the thermostat. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because maybe because maybe, maybe, maybe of where I was born. Because I was born in, in Pennsylvania, y'all. So I'm a northern I'm a northern cat. My parents yeah. are by our definition born southern cats i'm not technically by by definition i should be but they have me in the north so that doesn't mean that means shit to some you're not south you're, you're northern at that point if you because you're not born in the heat enough then you don't get used to it but for my ex she was just so used to the goddamn fucking heat it was like any any air wind it's not like for example my fan up here i don't know if you guys can see it up here oh, hold on yeah it's spinning right yeah. there uh <clears throat> It wasn't even on freaking like full power. It was like on like a, like a little breeze or something like that. And she's like, it's so cold. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how how are you? Uh, good, good, good. You got, you got something wrong with your skin, your pores right now. Dead ass. Because, because I've never heard of any 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 rational sister or woman would be like, it's fuck, too fucking hot. Give me some AC in here. But she's just so sensitive to like the cold wind. It's just so weird to me. And I'm just like, it's, it's just... What is going on here? <laughs> just, and I'm like, like because for me it's the opposite. I'm so warm; it needs to be cold. Mm. Is what it needs to be for me. I can't sleep without like it being a little chilly in the room. That's what I'm saying. Mm. And and if like I'll say, if it's hot, if it's really hot, then I won't sleep with any covers. I'll just sleep with like a tank top shirt and maybe some basketball shorts, and I'm good to go. That's all I need. But with her, it was just like what I was like, what the hell? Like, are you this sensitive to the damn cold? It's not even snowing. Like yo, what are you? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I said, you know what? You said, you know what I'm gonna do for you? What I'm gonna do is I am going to, I'm gonna pick you up and I'm, well, I'm gonna take you out to my hometown. I'm a, I'm gonna open up all the windows in the car, and I'm gonna let that cold air just hit your ass. That's what I'm gonna do. And she says, she says, no, nah, no, nah, don't do that. I'm good. Nah, 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 nah. Cause your body needs to adapt to some freaking cold, sweetheart. It's ridiculous. If we gonna have any type of future, yeah, you, you gonna have to deal with that cold, sweetheart, a little bit. I say, I say, fifty degree weather. I just said a little cold. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, if you're not born in, in the north, fifty degree weather ain't shit for a northern brother. Nah, it's gotta be forty is below. Still very warm. Sixty is like a really hot day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But like, I, I can wear shorts in fifty degree weather. And I'm I'm thirty one now, y'all, because y'all, y'all know I like I'm, I, I'm still nothing to me. Now we get to like 30, like 40 below, then you can you can talk to me about something. About jeans and shit. But when it's 50, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I said, I said, I said, I said y'all a bunch of bitches. To me. <laughs> <laughs> to me, in my mind, you are. At least. But, um, but, but, but you know, like, things, things, courts like that, that your, that your lady likes and things like that, that's good. That she, uh, sees that sometimes. Because, you know, it's a way of interacting with each other. Way of showing affection and also a way of just uh, communicating. I always mm-hmm. tell people, like I said, that's lost. That's a lost art. At least your lady and you do that, and particularly. But I still, I still find it kind of funny. She wanted, to, she wanted to record you in pain. That's, that's oh, kind of, yeah. that's kind of. It was like rare moments. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, though. You that's know what, rare. though? I was just talking to my wife yesterday about something. I said, uh, I was talking about like, oh, um, we we're talking about like, why do guys? I was talking about why guys in general. Well, like they love, but they don't love too much. They give you just, just enough to appreciate. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't smother 
and affection for people that we love. You know what I'm saying? We just give them just a little bit. So for instance, our right. dog, right? My dog loves me more, or at least shows me the most affection because I don't give her all the attention. So my wife, she'll drown that dog in all types of affection and attention. And my dog, you can see her expression. She looks annoyed by that right. shit. She'll come to me, want me to pet on her <laughs> love on her. And I just, I look at her like, yeah, you cute. Yeah, whatever. I get a little pet and then I know what's going on. But then she'll, she'll keep wanting more, but I don't give it to her. So she'll just keep on bugging me until she get her affection. You know what I'm saying? Then my wife look at him and be like, why right. she like you so much? I'm like, Cause I give her just a little bit. I don't give her a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? I give her just enough for her to appreciate that. And I say, you know what? My dad does the same thing. Everyone, every father does the same thing. Like they don't, they don't love but the way the mom loves. And that's why when your dad does something, mm-hmm. you remember that shit. Like you be like, y'all remember my dad said that, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> because right. he, he, he's not he's not saturating you in it. He he's not ignoring you, but he's not going to smother you in it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to give you just mm-hmm. enough. So exactly, and, and and I think that's how dads are supposed to be. Personally, for me, he, mm-hmm. the dad loves you. You'll hug you when he hasn't seen you in a while. Y'all chat it up. Y'all talk. How you and your lady doing, son? How, like I said, how's work doing? Stuff like that. He'll talk. Like you'll have that real man to man moment that y'all should have. And that's yeah. why I've always loved. And I think you know what's so funny. I did, I think I talk. I, it's so crazy because I think it's the opposite. Like I think, not really to your father when you're younger. More, I think you talk to your mom more. For me, after mm. I got oh, older, younger, yeah, to, definitely. Yeah, younger to my mother, and then after that, I got older. It was more to my father. Exactly. Yeah, and and now I talk to my father about possibly about everything. Yeah, like literally, it makes sense too. It makes sense. And, I, and I'm not saying it's supposed to be that way, but I think I think that's fine because you're getting a modicum of balance. Because it's like because you always told her, but now when you're older, you start telling me more things now, son. Like you, you know, you always, I'm talking about you come to dad for the really important stuff. Like he's, he's dad, he's gonna sit down and talk to you. Whenever you're young, you make a fuck up mistake or you make a a, a life changing thing, he'll talk to you and tell mm-hmm. you how it's gonna be without any emotion. Your mom, mom's going to bring in emotion, things like that, come from the heart, the love, from the heart of love, things like that, nurturing side. Yeah. And I said, um, I think that's very important that you have both those dynamics in front of you, because I think as you're getting older, you're sent, you're you can relate more a little bit more to your father because he was you at one point. So that's why I said it's good to listen to him when you're when he's young, when you're young, mm-hmm. when you're older, that can have grown conversations. Because exactly, because it's just like uh, with women. Um, women are there for the most part when it comes to children they're there to instill culture you know what I'm saying they're the ones that are going to most likely teach them how to talk give them certain mannerisms you know uh, channel different types of emotions with them and stuff you know what I'm saying um, how, and because you know it depends on boy or girl they both have that protection over them and stuff seeing the mom's example and stuff but then when it comes to having guidance that's going to come from the father more or less more likely you know what I'm saying? So they'll start mm-hmm. looking for the father, for like, yo, how do you be moving? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to move like this. So you start getting like your principles, so many things that are instilled in you, to start guiding you in a certain way. So you'll try to right. move better than your father did. Of course, every father wants their sons or daughters to do better than what they are. So they're going to basically give you a head start and say, hey, yo, this is how I was moving. This is what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Here's the tools. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, your mom got you this far. You know what I'm saying? She built you up, protect you, fed you, all these things. But now that you're big and grown, I'm going to show you how to move now. So, this is I'm going to give you some guidance. You can take it from here. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm going to give you just a little bit so you can make mm-hmm. it on your own. Because your mom gave you everything you needed. All right? You're grown now. I'm only here to give you just a little bit so you can just keep moving the way you're going to move. That's it. Exactly. And, that, and like I said... One of the key sets of becoming a father for me is uh, learning everything my father taught me, obviously, and then add corporate things that I know that he needs. Because I think, cause like I said, cause I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to relate to him. Because I was I was his age at one point. Mm-hmm. And I was a badass kid. <laughs> 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 I just don't want him to make the same mistakes I did. And I told people, let your kid make, let your kid make some mistakes, but don't make him, let him make big ones. It was one, mm-hmm. one thing where, like, you know, I forgot to put the clothes in dry. I'm like, okay, do it correctly the next time. If you don't, you won't get no allowance. Simple enough. So, so things like that to help reinforce it for him, because you know you want you want your things to be clean. Like, dude, I cleaned up my whole freaking room on my day off the freaking another day, dude. Like, I have like everything looks so much better. I took the mm. time to do all that to get away from all this, to just do all this particularly. Mm. 
So it's like, you know, teaches responsibility. It gives you, it gives you, um, structure. it's a morale and structure. Yeah. That's one of the things that here, that's why I think fathers do. Fathers give you structure. Yeah. Particularly. Sure. And they, and they like shutting you out. And I mm -hmm. guess <clears throat> I love and respect that a lot. Like I said, that's why I said men are very much needed. Fathers are very much needed. That's why I'm always on the men's side. More often than not, if you're a father of any kind and you're in your kid's life, I give you W's up for still being in their lives. Me, I was just <laughs> one. I was too young to make a kid. I'll tell you that. Uh, one, one, no way. I was, no way was I real responsible in high school, just because I did <laughs> great and shit. No way in hell I was going to be able to come at that. Wasn't ready. Number one, number two, I need to build myself up. Three, I need to make sure mm -hmm. I was financially stable. And then one, and then after, well, four, after I was financially stable, then I make sure I do what I got to do to get where I want to get to. And then after properly betting a lady, then um, I don't know if she. Like I said, I don't, I don't know if I want to make her my wife. It won't take no goddamn three years. Fuck that. Uh, no, it, don't. Time. it doesn't take really, honestly. Yeah, men, I tell people like men, people. Yeah, make men yeah, actually know. But thing is, no, thing is, let's be honest. Let's be honest with the table. Men know between three to six months whether the girl is wifey or not. The thing exactly. is, this, nine times out of ten, we got other tendencies, or we are not necessarily ready. You know what I'm saying? We want her, mm -hmm. but we ain't got it. I don't got the situation where it'd be good enough for her to be comfortable. So there won't be no drama exactly. going into our marriage. Because after the honeymoon goes over, you got to build the rail. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, they're going to come up like, you know, we just, I prolonged it because I really wasn't ready, but I really liked her. Right? And then you get others that'll be like, I really like her. I'm good, but I still got my old tendencies. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to, you know, smash the Jones on the side. So I talk to real men who tell me these things. You know what I'm saying? I got a guy, like, he got a wifey type right now. Like, everything he told me about her and how she followed him and does all this stuff. I'm like, bro, she really there for you. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, I know, but I still got my things I've been doing. I'm like, well, at least you know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but don't. I would tell dudes like that. Like, if they're not trying to pursue anything, then just, hey, man, let her go. Let her. Do she? I'll he be remember still real. figure it out though. You know what I'm saying? He, he's on his own time, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like you know, don't make. But well, don't promises. waste her time too. Also, yeah, yeah. That's don't don't make no promises. You know what I'm saying? So just yeah, don't make promises you can't keep. Yeah, so that's my like, whole thing. Know, if I'm a good commit, I'm gonna yeah. commit the whole way. Like all my listen, when I come to her, I ain't got nothing on me. Dead free, all that shit. I got none of that, and it's just simple enough. I make sure she's comfortable in relationship, things like that, and it's like. If I see the sign that she is a wife, then I'm like, oh, trust me, we'll do, we'll marry right guy, away. This, this situation is, I can understand it, though, because this man was previously married, and he had a kid, and he hasn't Oh, had, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. different. He, yeah, so I get his situation, and he hasn't been in a relationship for like 10 years. So, Damn. for him to be, yeah, because he's married, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now that he's on the market, he's free, you know what I'm saying? That's why he kind of will have fun again. Cause he's going back to his old ways and stuff. So I was like, I get it. And you just came out of a marriage. So that kind of makes you feel oh. like, well, damn, what if this don't work? So I, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm hearing him. I understand where you're coming from. That's why I say like, it's quite the conundrum. Pace, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, as long as you, like for me, I'm, I'm a little different than he is because I just be having fun. If I already had a wife, I'm a married one type person. If I got a kid, that's the best blessing in the world. You know what I'm saying I got my yeah, kid. Man. I'm going. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. Really... Yeah, I'm the same way. Once I have that, I'm good. <laughs> I'm not gonna fuck it up. I told, my, I told everybody because, like I said, I told people I've never cheated in my life. Any, I have that on my resume, so I feel quite proud about that. So I got yeah. nothing to feel bad for. So, because if I haven't done it before, then I'm not gonna do it now. Yeah. Especially when I got everything that I finally wanted. I'm like, why would I fuck that up? Yeah, it don't make any sense to me. Because yeah. it's like, dude, like I tell my friend, like you just won the medal or the trophy in this case. Now the thing is, you keep you keep everything you have, so you don't lose the trophy, particularly, and you and you make sure that both those people are are freaking set for life. And when I say set, I mean like you will provide for them, you, you, you provide for them through your hard work and blessed and tears. The pleasure you get is seeing your son, your little baby girl smiling whenever they see you through the door, and you spending time with your wife whenever the time y'all get when the baby knocked out until the wakes back up and cry again. That's what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> Cause trust me, I tell people those moments are brief, but they're good. They're good moments. Mm. I, have a lot, I have a lot of brothers tell me that, like, bro, I never thought me of all people would be a damn dad, and it's just like, yo, and they waiting on me to become one. I told them, like, bro, y'all gonna have to wait like five fucking years. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> Ain't no rush. Five or yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I told, I, I told them brothers six. 
Five yeah, is being yeah. like that's being generous. When I say yeah, that, I'm yeah, like six, sure. bro. For sure. Cause I make sure, sure I'm all set and everything, and also that all my um things that I leave in America, I leave here, and I'm just uh -huh. over here to start my more in Japan to start my life, just to like not not just a new beginning, but just more so um knowing what my mission is and what I gotta take care of. And then when I finally meet that lady that can take care of some of the say stress, that can relieve some of the stuff that I've I've got a burden on me. Because mm -hmm. like, you know, because I'm mostly doing everything for myself at the time, then I'm, trust me, I know I'm gonna want that girl, that that woman back in my corner. Literally. That's what I was gonna say. You want, you want to, yeah. want someone who's gonna be a cheerleader in your corner. Um, that's the mm -hmm. one that I, I said that to on my channel too. I said for the women, I said, yo, all you have to do, like I said, the one thing that you need to do, you won't be a good woman to your husband or whatever, right? Just have faith in him. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know what I'm saying? I get how y'all get curious and y'all want to ask questions all the time, but sometimes, because y'all make excuses. Women make excuses. It's like, oh, I just need to know. Like, no, you don't. How do you I? You don't know really need to know. Because you know why I know that you don't need to know? Because when I'm not home with you, right, and I'm doing what I'm doing, working or doing whatever, you don't ask questions. You just, you're comfortable and you have faith to know where I'm at. So, Apply the same rule when I tell you like, yo, we're gonna go, we're gonna take our plans, we're gonna go here, and you start asking, well, how they're gonna get there, blah, blah blah. I say, yo, don't worry about it, just just know we're gonna get here. I'm telling, I'm giving you a date and time. We're gonna leave here on this date and this time. All right, that's what it is. All right. Now, if you say if you take yeah. it like that, cool. But if you start questioning or start doubting me, you 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 are not loving me in that moment. You know why? Because if I told someone else the same shit I just told you, they take it in stride. Be like, oh, bet. That's what sounds good. But you, you question me. Why are you questioning me? When a stranger takes it and accepts what I say, but you can't accept what I have to say. Why would that be? You know what I'm saying? I was saying, like, mm -hmm. believe in your man. Because your man, look, a man tries to live by his word as best he can. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want, no man wants to go get his own word. If he says it's going to be something, just let, let that be. Let that be. When it doesn't happen, then you can hold him accountable. But don't try to jump the gun before it even happens. So, Correct. So it is. I agree with you. And I think my before we uh, get into the last two questions, I'm going to say this. Because I've been enjoying this conversation. I'm enjoying uh, the education you're giving me and also how much I'm retaining most of this right now. So this is really good that you're saying this because 100% of 90% of what you're saying, I agree with. Don't worry, there's no 10% I disagree. I'm just going to say 90 because I feel like we've got most of that out. <laughs> most of it's okay. To me, yeah. to, to, to me, the reason why, because there, there can't be anything more, I mean, anything at 100%. Yeah, 100% no that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like I said, humans don't move in absolutes. For it's sure. just not possible. For sure, and they for did, sure. And if they did, then math is, math, math is one of the logical absolutes, which is not. Even I know yes. that. It's used for our math. It's used for our money. For us to calculate, to add, subtract, divide, all that stuff, but it's not an absolute mm -hmm. at all. Yes, but uh, but we but we do use it. So mm -hmm. I do say that. And also, okay, so all right, my last two questions. First of all, I'll say this: What made you want to uh, be married, Mister Marvelous uh, Opinion? Oh boy, man! The first woman who ever inspired me to want to get married was uh, I won't say her name. This is a girl from Spain. Um, Keep her secret. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, you know, it's just we had a very bad fallout. Um, she she inspired me. I was in uh, I was in Spain, and then I got a mission to go out to the Middle East. And while I was in the Middle East, uh, this is when uh, Spain won, um, won the FIFA Cup. They actually won the World Cup. So mm -hmm. they, you know, I don't know if you know about Spain, but Spain already goes hard. They went extra hard because they actually won their first World Cup. So it was the summertime, and I'm hitting her up in August, and like I'm writing letters and leaving emails, and I'm not getting reply from them. I'm like, what the, what's going on with it? I mean, I know it was like maybe like two months before I left, but we've been talking for like nine months on here. So what's going on? Why should you stop all of a sudden? And then September comes around, and that's like the week before I come back. And I let her know, like, I'm on my way back. And she actually replied. I said, oh, cool. So, I mean, I know you was probably having fun. I was like, I know we're not really boyfriend and girlfriend like that. But, like, I actually ended up developing feelings for her. Like, I had a dream and all this stuff about her and stuff. She the first girl that actually inspired me to actually want to have a family. So that's what really inspired me. She was. 
the one who inspired me to want to have a family. I never thought mm. about ever wanting to be with anyone until it was with her. And I was on my mission stuff, locked up in the tents and stuff in the desert. And I had no one to think about but her when I was out there. So she inspired that. You know what I mean? I never thought about wanting to have a family and wife on that stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It was her who inspired that. And that thing turned into a nightmare. <laughs> Straight up yeah. nightmare, bro. Shorty was cheating on me with her ex and stuff like that. It got real nasty, real nasty. Um, but then after her, you know what I'm saying? Like, I met my wife uh, after one girlfriend. I had one girlfriend. I almost want to say her name, but she really is good people. But I just keep in privacy. She was cool. We didn't work out because I'm in the military. She ain't built for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I was, it is not so much, it's a long distance thing. She's not good for that. She got real insecure issues. So if I was to go somewhere, she would trust me. But as she would put it, I don't trust those bitches. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I can mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, I, I trust you, but I don't trust those bitches. So I was just like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? I get you. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> she can't deal with that in her heart. I get it. She was. She was a fighter, bro. I ain't gonna lie. She was a true fighter, bro. Like, that chick would probably would have killed someone for me, bro. Like, that's how crazy she was for me, man. But, um, then I met my wife. Actually, she she met me. It was on a website, um, mingle.com. I made a profile on there real quick. And I didn't even think I would find someone like her. I thought she was fake. Uh, I, I, I would show you a picture of my wife, but she... I oh no 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 no! Yeah 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 yeah! yeah. No, no no no, brother! I would say wife. keep that. Yeah. I'm gonna be real, bro. I, I, all your brothers to keep that to themselves. Cause they ain't gotta show the show the yeah, yeah, to the yeah. world. Um, I believe, like I said, I, I'll go. I'll, I'll go off your word. So maybe one enough. day, one this. day, yeah. one day, maybe if I'm big enough on YouTube. Show it to the. I would say this. You're big enough <laughs> on YouTube. Show it to the world. Once I become but a I don't know. Figure. Yeah. Well, I'll say this, bro. Even even though when I go to Japan, I don't think I'm even gonna blog everything. To be honest, I think some stuff should just be kept to myself. To be honest. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think, sure, um, sure. and I think, like I said, y'all need because I think the problem I have, and I've started to realize this. Why are these people? I said, why are people freaking filming your life for others to see? Mm. Some some things are private, and some some experiences need to be kept private. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're showing them uh, what y'all do in the funky. I'm talking about like basically freaking like just uh, the drama. Like, nobody need the drama and things like that, or things like yeah. that. Like I'm sorry, I'm not. There's a, there's a reason why I didn't like reality TV for so long because I'm like, bro, like, I don't really want to sit here. Yeah, toxic as hell. P- people can't interact with one another. It's just like, it's just, it's just to get risky and to profit mm-hmm. on people's like daily lives. I'm not with that shit. I actually prefer some things to be quiet, to be private. Now, mm-hmm. I'm about to tell you guys, like, guys, yeah, I'm here. I'm here in Yokohama. I'm here, 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 here. After that, this is the last blog. I'll see you guys in like three years. Whenever mm-hmm. I decide to come back. Mm. And then, and then after that, I'll and then, and I think what I what I would like to do is be a uh, quote unquote. I said this in my stream of vital message, y'all. If y'all was here to, uh, for that stream, I told him I like to be a person that um, that encourages other brothers, either who want to come to Japan, who want to live over there, or just have a life over here, or ha- have a life, or quote unquote uh, work here. If they want something peaceful for themselves, I'm I'm willing, I'm willing to help them. Like I got like I got the help. Cause once I'm over there, I can say I did it. I'm like, I want to be that person for them. If they want to, like I said, I think I'm going to do that. Other than that, <laughs> don't worry. I'm not trying to make a profit on YouTube. I, I don't care. Like I got my life and my family. I'm going to try to be as far away from this shit as as, as interesting as possible and just spend time with my family. Mm. Work, family, chill, sleep. <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> That's, uh, That's what it's going to be. Any, uh... It does. Oh, the thing I was talking about too, my marriage and stuff. So my wife, she found me on the website and she hit me up and I thought she was fake. I thought it was catfish. That she's very beautiful. And she was also from Asia. I never talked to a girl from Asia. This is why I was still in Spain too. So she was in Taiwan. And I'm just like, who is this girl? You know what I'm saying? So I hit her back. I'm like, all right, cool. So then I was like, yo, you got a Facebook? All right, cool. Uh, do you want to Skype? So we Skype and I just I don't want to see her. I don't want to be catfish. I'm like, I see her. I'm just like, oh shit, it's really her. You know, so then mm-hmm. we started talking for about seven months and I went to go over to Taiwan. This is my first time in Asia. And yo, it's like dude, my first experience there it was amazing because everyone was so nice, bro. Everyone was so kind. Um uh, people were curious of course, wanna take pictures and stuff like that. Um, talking to the taxi driver. 
he thought maybe I was a professor or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like a different type <laughs> of stereotype. You know, man, you know, a you professor? Know, you, I like yeah, that. You know how some stereotypes are like, are you a basketball player or something like that? Or are you a rapper? Yeah, yeah. Nah, he ain't saying that. He was like, are you a professor? And I was like, nah. But, you know, I was just like, because I was, the way I was dressed that day, I guess, I was looking, you know, nice and I was well spoken. So you might have thought something like that to that extent. But it was all good, though. But then after that, That's you know, Taiwan, up. that shit was amazing. The food, like, I got introduced to bubble tea, and it was a wrap. <laughs> bubble tea, <laughs> bubble that was tea, it. That's yeah. about crack cocaine right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wrap at that point. It's like, you don't get no better. Oh, no. You don't get no better, man. Like, oh, my God, I still love bubble mm. tea to this day, man. That is my crack cocaine right there. Um, Your guilty I pleasure, I got you. Yeah, I had all types of After, stuff over there. All types of stuff. Oh, that's there. good, man. I'm glad. Well, 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 I'm glad you got it. I'm glad it turned out to be who it was. You didn't get played. You didn't get suckered. And also, you 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 got something with you that most men would love to have. To be honest, I would yeah, say actually, like, I say most, but yeah. It was after three years um, of long distance, and within three years, we actually only had about six months of face to face time. You know, it's an actual in person. And that three years thing. That's good that she showed her face on camera. Like, I'll be, I look at people's lips because I'm not with the whole, I'll be honest, I'm more like face to face because I don't like the whole face cam thing personally. Because, mm -hmm. because um, I can't be sure that's you. Yeah, yeah, I need to make sure. Your hair is yours, your eyes are yours, your lips are <laughs> yours, all that shit. I'm sorry. No, you, you ain't wrong because, like, today with the I'm AI sorry. and these filters, mm -hmm. you, yo, you're not wrong for that. These filters is the devil, bro. <laughs> a devil man they're a goddamn oh man they're, they're an abomination <laughs> to be honest like to get away to get away from uh hiding while you really look I, there's no filter on me y'all y'all already y'all have already seen what i look like with my hat off my hat on my jacket off my jacket on y'all know what i look like like seriously mm. there's nothing i'm hiding and no no men do not wear makeup unless they're in hollywood i'm yeah, not in hollywood true. <laughs> oh, so then after we got, let me see, I got married to her in Hawaii. Um, it was just off a whim, like it wasn't even like supposed to be like it wasn't supposed to happen. We just wanted to go to the office and figure out like how do we get married? Cause my wife she she's from Taiwan, so I said, how do you get married? You no, know, she's foreign, you know, where the process and steps or whatever, right? So he's like, well, does she have a passport? Yup. She has a social security card? Yup. Yeah, sixty dollars? Yup. That's it. Word? That's all you need? Hey, babe, you wanna get married now? Uh, sure. Sure, what's going on? So, <laughs> we we did it right there on the spot, you know what I mean? Because I'm <laughs> in the military, and I could take the extra money that I get for being married, and we could use it for next year for the ceremony. So, that's how we looked at it, you know what I'm saying? It was like, let me just get married right. now. But dude, I'm not gonna lie, the moment I took my first step outside, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it hit me. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> like, what did I do? I was like, no. <laughs> like, dog, like, you understand? <laughs> because it was so spontaneous. It was so quick. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize what I did. I said, oh, shit. I'm married now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> it hit me all at once. And then I called my mom's up. My mom just like, oh. remember, this happened on April 1st. So I call my mom's up and I said, Yo, mom, I just got married. <laughs> and she said, Oh, April Fools, you funny. I said, Nah, I'm, what? Oh, that is April Fools, huh? Nah, mom, I'm dead ass serious. And she says, You lying. And she, start, she starts crying and shit. I was just like, Uh, I was like, Mom, we have a ceremony next year. I know. Yeah, and she was just like so excited and. It was just, it was just fun though. But yeah, I was like, dude, we really got married April Fool's Day. That's hilarious. And I posted it on Facebook, and no one was believing it. And I was just like, I'm dead ass, bro. I just got married today. But yeah, man. And then ever since then, man, it's been, it's been one hell of a ride, bro. Um, I'll tell you this: in a relationship, after about three years or so, you're gonna start seeing things in a way like you're gonna start recognizing. Uh, you should be able to see yourself in your spouse you should see each other in, in each other you should, you should be able to like the things that you do your habits you gotta be careful what you bring into your relationship because you're going to see it play out in your spouse like you guys are the biggest impact and influence to each other 
So what you do, she will reflect that every time. From the way you speak, from your habits, she'll take all those things on once. So if you are like, like, for instance, right? I told you I work out and stuff, right? My wife's a personal trainer now. Mm. She would have never went that path if not for me. And I didn't tell her to do anything like that. She just saw me in the gym one day and then she wanted to go to the gym and start working out. So I trained her a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, she became her own thing after three months. And then after about a year and a half, she said, I'm going to be a personal trainer. She doing personal training stuff. And now she's successful. She has her own little Instagram, all that stuff. And I'm just like, I'm proud of her. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, but she, she took my hobby and made it a career. That's funny to me. I'm just like, damn. She really just took that from me. But she takes it's more than long. that. Yeah, she takes more than that from me. She also took my tongue. So <laughs> I got in a bad habit of cussing all the time. While I'm at, you know, I'm in the oh, military. So no, we cuss no, like no, sailors. No. And every now and then, my wife would start slipping and start cussing. I'm just like, damn, I can't even get mad because that's from me. She got that all from me because she was nothing like that. That's, yeah, that's all me. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> that's definitely on you. I'm sorry. That's why I, I said you got to be careful what you bring into your relationship, yeah, bro. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, guys, like, for real, if I don't want to leave because I rather the first is do proper language and stuff. Like I said, you got to train a lot of bad habits out of you from that. Yeah. That's like, can you be around brothers too much? <laughs> you got to. Yeah. So let, let that be listen, everybody. I guess my last thing to ask my man, listen, when I get there, I'm not going to have to shave this, am I? No. Please, because I, I they, they love brothers, though. You're I, straight. I, I, you come I, I, out I, here, you're you gonna be scooped up quick. I tell you right now, they love brothers out here, man. I'm not well, even I, joking. I, I, also, okay. I also mean like in just jobs too, not just simply ladies. Oh no, you gonna clean it up for a job? You clean that up. That's gonna be oh. all cleaned up. Yeah, you want a job to teach you? That's coming all clean. I mean, it don't gotta be light. No, I think it do. I think it do. I'll be butt naked at first. <laughs> at least the first 180 days, you got to be like clean shaved. But oh. once you uh, once you got established, you can't. I'm going to mess the crush bar on my neck, bro. You, you can have the, I mean, you get the full thing, you get the full beard. You know what I'm saying? You get the Rick Ross, but it can't be too long. You know what I'm saying? It's still got to look clean. It's got to look clean. It can't look rugged. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. <laughs> they got to stand out here. Bro. That expression out here, it's like the hammer, the nail gets the hammer. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah, stick man. out over here. So with that, you I, already I really, I really want to cut all this off, bro. Like you're gonna, yeah, man, you already black, so that's already one strike against you. But then you go out there with the beard, you really trying to stand out. So you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta you gotta not don't be that hammer, don't be the nail that gets hammered, bro. I'm just telling you, you know, they don't they don't I, like I it you. out here. I got you. I know, I know. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to let me cut it every week because, like I said, it's, I have extra sensitive skin, bro. I'm trying to have a nasty crunch bar on my neck. Mm. Bro, that's terrible. Or was like, I wear a face was... mask every time a girl sees me. Why don't you get the clippers and then also before you start clipping, use a, 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 a hot towel and soften your stuff up. You know what I'm saying? And put some oils on it. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't have to be so hard when you actually trim it up. Because what happens is usually your stuff will grow back in and it's coarse and it's real thick. But if it was... It's going to do that regardless, but if you soften it up, it's not going to cut right back into your skin. It's not going to be as hard. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it, it, you got to, it, it takes technique. It takes time to really massage your beard and make sure it doesn't get all rough and stuff. But that's a little tip. It, I would just start with just the hot water thing. Don't get a hot towel, place it in the face, loosen the skin up a little bit, soften the hair, and then shape right. it down a little bit. You already you you are. already good there, bro. You know me. Mm -hmm. Clean shave, we all good for the most part. Hit my head on something recently. I should hurt like hell, but it, it's healing. It's like a, mm. <laughs> it's like when some it's like when you hit your head on something on top of the freaking ceiling or some shit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's healing. Don't worry. Ouch. But I'm fine now for the most part, y'all. So so yeah, I'm like I'm good there. It's just um, I was wanted to know for the most mm. part. I know you can't have a whole freaking like bush or some shit, but. Yeah, man. yeah, it can be yeah, no, yeah, no bush. It could be something like, like I said, as long as it looks. Nice. Was it something similar to this? If I just like cut it, because like I said, for most of these, I just cut this. Is what it is, and there's no hair on it. I would say connect it. If you can connect like a gold tea, you straight gold tea will work. Okay, gold tea. I got yeah, you. Just make sure it's connected. Like I say, it gotta just look symmetrical and neat. You know what I'm saying? You don't want look something looks too faddish. It gotta look like, like I said, like boss. You know what I'm saying? It gotta look like it's good, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna have a beard, have the full beard, but have it nice and even, you know what I'm saying? 
If you're going to have what you got right there, then make it a gold tee, make it nice and flush and even. You know what I'm saying? I got you, brother. Thank you for letting me know that. I've been meaning to ask everybody about that. Fucking shit and Like mm-hmm. I said, I I rarely do this, but if I do, I do it maybe like once, twice in a month. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I just don't let it get too out of hand, but I just don't, like I said, I just want to fuck up, fuck up the bottom part of your fucking neck and shit. Like, if yeah. you do that, you have to get, I would say get the chin strap on where it's like, come down and it connects. You know what I'm saying? You suck up all this. Like I said, get the full beard if you need to, honestly. You know what I'm saying? You can still have all of that, so you don't have to worry about cutting your neck hair and all that stuff. But you still got to keep it at least, at least probably, I'll say like a centimeter, like a two centimeters max off your face and you'd be good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got you, man. And Adora, this is my last question. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you had you wanted to ask me particularly, or uh, huh. anything anime wise, or anything uh, real life wise, any of those things? I, I want because it's funny because I get like I allowed Jane to get get that off me. Well, it's only fair that you guys can actually ask me anything I want. Go ahead. Okay, two things. Don't ask me about freaking politics. <laughs> don't. No. And, um, I don't usually. I don't really care. And women nonsense. Really. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Right now, right now, right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm drained from them shit. <laughs> trying to yeah. think what was my I'll give me one second. I got I got something real quick. Okay, go ahead, brother. Alright, cool. Nice chair, by the way. Thanks. Alright, alright, that deals with this all I told you I was writing my book. This is all stuff for my book, so mm-hmm. All right, cool. Where I want to go with this? Uh... All right. So, what are your what would be your keys to success? If you had three keys to success, what would they be? That's a good question. Three keys to success. Okay. My humbleness. Okay. My willpower. Okay. And my communication. I respect that. And the reason why I'm going to say, so I'll go over each one. Communication. I think communication is so crucial in trying to in trying to learn from somebody. It mm-hmm. is, uh, it's one of the key factors of why you'll be successful. Or in this case, you'll be able to learn so much more when you... Uh, when you um, have that, when you're able to communicate one-on-one to someone or actually look someone in the eye when you're having a present conversation, you actually you actually will get the most out of a person if you actually show the actual proper communication skills. If you don't, well, then it just, you're just going to have sloppy talk, uh, talking, and no one likes that. Mm-hmm. And I think communication is key in terms of relationships, in terms of the work, in terms of work, and, and just in terms of how information flows. So that's another thing. I mean, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a little bit out order, but um, humbleness. Me being able to humble myself to hear other people, I think, is a strong point to me. I'm willing to learn from others simply and um, drop down my pride and ego, which I don't I actually don't have a pride and ego. I actually, I don't have that. So I threw that away. I don't, I don't have, I have no need for it because it gets in the way of, the, of you. And it's like a, to me, it's a crutch. And it, uh, it'll fuck you up like you did Napoleon and all, and all those older rich guys in, in the back in the olden times. But we'll fuck them up sometimes. So that's why I dropped my ego and pride. But I think if you drop it, um, you're like I said, you're willing to like I said, you're willing to learn from others. You're willing to grasp situations and not just see things your way, but to see the other person's perspective, like what we're doing right now when we're having this conversation. And you're and you learn so much more when you do that when you. When, you, when you're humble, when you humble yourself and you actually um, give yourself humility. Similar to the Thor situation. You think you're on top, you think you're on top, but I have to send you down here so you can learn a lesson about what it means to be an actual person. Mm-hmm. Humbleness is one of the many traits that is lost to us and that is very much needed. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> and actually, you know what? I want to change one from from, uh, from willpower. I want, I'm going to say honor. You being a man of honor really shows your character. And, I, and like I said, honor and character can go hand in hand for me. So it can be interchangeable, but I think they're the same. You know, they're different definitions. If you're a man of character, a man of honor, 
you, it, mean, it means that you hold boundaries that you set forth and that you live you live by these principles and you're gonna and you're gonna most likely there's a term die die with them too being known for that for example one one man that i was that uh, i respect a lot is jordan peterson he said he wants to be remembered for being honest and not one i like to i would like to be i would like to be known as a man and at the very end the end <laughs> you know third of my life when i have children and my wife to be as a person a man of integrity honor character and also somebody who really loves his wife and kid simple enough that that, that you know that your dad loves you and that he would he served for his blessed wind tears so that you guys can all live in this house and also be successful and not be on the street. So I think so I think honor, humbleness, <clears throat> and communication are key to success. I like that. I actually that, there's others. I, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and I will say this. There are others. But I think oh, yeah. those are the things that come to my mind. Yeah, three. Those are three. Yeah, that's good. If I, I don't like have that. at least two out of those three, then I don't think I'll be safe. I don't think I'll I'll be, I don't want to have the key to success particularly. I won't have those quote unquote instruments I need to push me even further. Because what else, because I've always, because one of my favorite lines, well, this is from a series, y'all, but bear with me. There's one scene in Shaolin Showdown where Omi says, because um, because he's a Shaolin monk and he believes in the actual ways of being honorable, he says, unlike you guys, I take my honor very seriously. Honor is the one thing that separates from evil. It's what, it's actually what makes us monk. Makes us the better, yeah. Not because we fight for good, but because without honor, we 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 would not be monks with it. So, or or uh, a monk of character. So that's why I like that line so much. That's why I actually I job with that line because it makes a lot of sense to me. So, because to me, you're honor bound and war bound by something, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to stand up for something a little bit more than yourself because it's not about you at that point. It's about what what you're holding up to and what you've been taught i see this with any type of sensei who you learn from that you're that you're taking up their teachings mm -hmm. that they're that they're, they're trying to teach you the last vested vested ah, Jesus, they're trying to show you the last vestiges mm, vestiges 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 of their um of their quote unquote uh prior quarries that they had when they were younger and they want to and they want to press the good the good things that they build up onto you, the good on good lessons and hardships, like because they want you to get it right. Before, <laughs> they want you to get it right, unlike they got it wrong at the beginning and then got to it. Yeah. So, and and that's why, like I said, I see it with any sensei that, that you see in any medium or form. And we've watched enough anime live, lo a lot of live actions to freaking see this many times yeah, over. Yeah. Bruce Lee, I, I've been throwing Bruce Lee movies. I'm a same way anime. Bruce Lee, all them shits. Mm -hmm. That's in there. Mm -hmm. Jackie Chan, that's in there. Jet Li and some of the stuff that's in there. I can. I'll even throw in Jason Statham. Jason Statham never had a teacher, but what he shows you is that he's a man of character. And in, in the roles that he played, he's very honor bound. Transporter. He is not. He's not. He's, he's bound by his word. And he lives by a code. And he doesn't let anybody fuck up his fuck up his code. Like you follow his rules, or I don't do the fucking job. Is that something? So that's why I kind of like men like that. I think you have to be a man of that. Okay, I'm, I'm saying that you'd be a hard ass, but you need to have some sense of moral principles to you. You gotta have respect for yourself. Live mm -hmm. by that's so how you live. You earn respect by living by your own code, be a man of your word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man without his yeah. word, or 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 a man without his uh, word is kind of like a man with no honor in it. In this case, yeah. So for me, like your word should be bond. Yeah. I like using person, that because it's the truth. You know, does it remind me of when you said that the person that came to mind was uh, I don't know if you know the TV show, but you about the same age uh, on the Wire. The oh, the Wire. Omar. Omar. Omar from the Wire. <laughs> okay. The reason why he was loved is because he did have a code. He never messed with civilians. He stuck to the game and the game only. You know what I'm saying? He respected the police for what they were. He knew what he was. He ain't never mixed up the business. He kept it real with his partners. That's why it was such a love character. He was a controversial character because he was gay or whatever, but you you don't really even see him that way because, again, because his character outshined his actions. Who he was, what he stood for was bigger than just being some gay character. 
people True. even forget about that because again, that wasn't even that wasn't the thing about him. He was a man of honor who earned mad respect from people in the hood. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's, true, man. That's what I'm saying. When you're a man of who has lives by a code, you're gonna get some honor and respect from that because you live in the way you speak, you know what I'm saying? No, you are definitely going to. And I tell people, um, I think the reason why I love the samurai is because they're so honorable. I consider them like military men. The difference with them is they follow they follow the leaders or the or quote unquote person they were meant to follow and they carried out the orders that they were supposed to. And also they would die honorably. They what, what they would they would consider honorable. Yeah, yeah. And, um they followed that samurai code. They live by the sword, die by the sword. Simple enough. Yes. This is why I kind of respected them so much. And I'm like, yeah, I tell people I can say yeah, some I said no no American I said the Americans more often than not are more chickens. I don't think anybody would ever have the ball to follow that code. Think anybody no, we too, uh, what's the word of the four? I wouldn't even say prideful. I think they're more chicken. It's not, oh, not prideful. I was going to say that. I was going to say we no. too entitled. We got too many options. We're entitled to believe that you should be on top of things like that. And it's just like, yeah, you need to humble yourself because you're not the greatest ever. You're not. No one is. You can work your way up to be someone of lecture, but you're still not God. So, chill. That's why I tell people, like, just chill with that sometimes. I get that. Yeah. Like I said, I understand hierarchy nature. I, I get all that. I, that mm-hmm. makes sense. To me, I, I don't ever tell somebody how to get another life or whatever. But um, what was one of my favorite lines? A life without pain is a life without joy, without sorrow, without love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, you have, you have to teach your, I think you have to go through some of the struggles in order to become a better, better man and a better person. I think the struggle for a man is to go through so much adversity. But um, that pain will make him stronger in some regards. It can either break him or that's not a guarantee. It will either break him or it'll fortify him and some stronger. Mm. Um, and no, guys, that's not anime talking. That's real life. <laughs> I'm talking about dead ass. You see my eyes? I'm very serious when it comes to that. That's real life. Mm-hmm. Trust me, some man can be trapped in a well for freaking 10 years. And then they live it off maybe the soil or whatever, whatever kept him alive and whatever. And when he gets out, it's however he comes out, whatever he just has to do, it's up to him. Mm. Once he's got a community with society, things like that. You either choose to live his life peacefully way or you choose to live in a rage from him. So that's why I said you gotta you have to make you have to want to make a choice and a sacrifice of what you do to do what you want to do. Me and my brother brother, we are doing that right now, trust me. We're planning on making sacrifices for some day. I have no problem with doing that. That means less anime and push the criminal time into my work. I will do that. And I can always watch it later when I'm 40. Mm-hmm. I can wait until I'm 40, maybe 36. I'll do that. But I got a lot of shit to catch up on all that time. <laughs> and, uh, I do. I do. I do. I'm willing to do that. That's why I said I'm going to put this to the side and actually do what I got to do to get done. I'm not trying to be yeah. here. And trust me, me wanting to leave is what's pushing me to be so tired and tr- and study all this shit. Uh, yeah. Like I said, there are a lot of things that come in. To do the stuff that I try to do all the time. And like I said, I don't do it every day. But I need to do it majority of more days than often than not. I just the whole week I'm not doing stuff. I'm not studying because I was doing this YouTube bullshit. I'm gonna be real about that. It really was. And that's why I said I just, that's why I took it that's why that's why I decided to take it three weeks away from it. Mm. Still, still drop content, but have my day have about three to four or five days each and every uh, three weeks I'm not here on it. Just mm-hmm. to chill. Seriously, just to do like the uh, update this channel is what I'm doing. I'm working on OBS right now, Steve, because I'm making the channel better. I'm trying to push this to get uh, even further. And for and for those of you guys that don't know, but before I end this, we have a new channel up. There's not there's no content on there right now, but be sure to subscribe to that channel soon. It's called Ame no Takashi. So basically, in in, in English, that means Takashi of the Rain. That's what that means. So that's what that means, and I'm, I gave it a Japanese phrase because I wanted it to, and that's going to be and, and all the anime that I do here is going to be put over there. Mm. And I'm trying to, and I, but I need to get make sure I get my my anime my anime audience all the way over there because there's going to be nothing but anime. There won't be any World World Talks like how we have it over here. This is World World Talks one on one stuff that will be on here forever. Simple enough. I, I'm like I said, I'm trying to get the push and build up that I need to get over there because um, I won't be in those channels that I don't succeed because like this is something I really love to, I really love to talk about, but also I have 90, I, I have, I am literally 91 kid. I have so much knowledge of anime prior to people who, came, who just came <laughs> into the game. 
I can spit that. Because I've seen so much. But none of y'all don't know shit about Slayer. No one's ever brought that anime up. Mm. Ever. That's a 90 series. Mm. And it had four seasons in it. Oh, yeah. So, this is all off my head, I remember. I got an encyclopedia in here. And like fan, I said, there man. are some that I remember. Let's say the old ones I remember. Some of the newer ones I remember. And like I said, it, it just some, there are bad ones I remember. I try, I try, I try, I try not to remember the bad ones. Oh, but, dude, I got one stuck in my head right now, bro. It traumatized me. I'm so mad. It, I, like, it traumatized me, bro. It was like, God damn, I wish I never saw that scene because it, it pissed me off. And then it was so, the last was episode. Different. And I was like, oh, fuck no, I can't. I was so it was when those it was a very good shit. It was good, but the way it ended, it was like, oh fuck no, I cannot do this shit, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, that shit. even now it gives me flashbacks. That shit pissed me off so bad. Tell me, man, just tell me. You can try to remember. Berserk. There was a berserk one. I was right. Yeah, berserk, the first one. Oh, you. Oh, I know you're talking. I know you're talking. Okay, so I was. Yeah. Like, I must have had to be berserk because say we Yeah, good. you already know because that's dog. That's I know what you're talking about. Right. I know what you're talking about. And trust me, she's on. I don't know if you knew, but she's on. Uh, she, she, the figure of her, of Casca is actually on my freaking. Uh, mm. On my standing right here. Hold on. I'll turn. I'll turn it so everybody can see it. Hold on. That's her right there. Oh, okay. Okay. You know it's crazy though. I played yeah. berserk Fuck the game. Turn, bro. I played Berserk the game on the Dreamcast before I even like watched oh, that old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I, I kind of knew what the characters were, and uh, I, I, in, in the game, Casca, her, her memory is always fucked up. She's been traumatized, so I didn't know who she really was, and you know what her past mm-hmm. was. Right. I read a little bit because they gave me a little information in the background of who she was, but they didn't tell you like how she got fucked up or nothing like that. Then I saw the anime, and I was just yeah, like, just "Oh saying, my god." Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Bro, created... that shit was so much, bro. Like, that bro, I, like... Bro, I read that. I read that. Listen, so I'll tell you how, how it happened for me. What I thought. So this is okay. So I was I was in college when I finally decided to read this. Everybody was hyping this up. This was like 20, 2012, 2012, Yeah, I was in college from two thousand. No, it's from two thousand and ten all the way to two thousand thirteen. That's in uh, three years ago. Okay, associates, and um, I had a Saturday off, and I, I don't have to go to school on Saturday. My kid decided to do some school work, and then after that, I was gonna read some. I was gonna read some shit, and I'm like, I got done with the work early. I'm like, all right, let me just read some berserk. Caught up. No, I, I know I said I actually got to the point where we were on that. Um, so we got to the Costco thing, and I was like, bro, I literally started breaking in cold sweat. And please don't mind you, the AC is on in this motherfucker, and it was raining that day. And I'm like, why am I sweating? <laughs> when I'm reading this, like this ain't right. And I'm just like. Damn. Dog, Damn. that shit, that whole thing, his whole squad Bro, got fucking murdered. He lost his arm. You know what I'm saying? Then his best friend was doing his joint to his girl like that. Hey, I man, was bro, like, man. bro. Hey, <laughs> man. Hey, yo, man. They literally smashed your chick while looking at him. That's Dog, that thing. shit was so foul. I was that like. Was savage. I, I told and then I told it just you. cut off. And that was the last episode. And I was like, oh, hell no. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I was so pissed. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> but I remember, like, the very first episode, the very first episode, Griffin got killed. And But, like, you know, I, I kind of forgot all about that shit. I was like, oh, no, nah, hell no. Nah, he got to get it, bro. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I said the same, I said the same shit as you, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> That shit was oh, just so man. foul, bro. I'm like, dog, that is the most foulest. Like, you understand, like, this is your ride or die boy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all bad boys for life. You know what I'm saying? You you saw your boy on his lowest. You broke him out of jail. You know what I'm saying? He made you what you are, this lieutenant. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all was bandits. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, like, he betrayed all y'all for power. He killed all y'all peoples. And then yeah. cut your arm off. Well, held you down, really. And then Last took your wife and then just smash your wife in front of you, bro. Like, yep. dog, when I say, like, that is the most biggest betrayal, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about, I tell my friends, I think it's the most ridiculous betrayal you can think of. This is that on steroids. Mm. But I also, I've also said this. I, I, I'll even say this. If he had smashed the princess, what he did, then that was on him. 
I tell my friend, listen, I said, listen, I mean, he have to, like I said, you, you, you just don't go to the princess's corners and, bang, and bang her like casually. Like, I'm just going to go in there and bang her. I'm like, all right, bro. And not only that, I told my friend, listen, he wasn't going there for the sake of the freaking princess, whatever, because she liked him. He did it because he got psychologically effed by Guts. And he wanted to think of Guts and smash somebody while he was doing it. And I was like, is this motherfucker right for that? I was like, nah. What's crazy is like, no, no, no. What was blows my mind. This <laughs> the fact that this dude is thinking about another man while he's smashing a princess. That's fucking wild. That's wild. When I'm when I'm having listen, when I'm doing my thing with a woman, I am not thinking about another man. That just doesn't make any sense at all. My yo, he was looking at that man right in his eyes as he was doing it too. I was like, yo, that yeah. is the most like I said, that is the most foul. Like the only time there's only a few times I've seen something like that in um in, in media or movies. Um Law abiding citizen. Where oh, yeah, dude. Dog. Oh, the, beginning? the beginning? Yeah, when his daughter, they took his daughter to the daughter kitchen. And... Dog, I Her tell life. you right now, bro, yeah. I was like, I feel your rage, bro. I swear that is the most disrespectful, here's my thing. bro. Here's my thing. There's no way you can disagree with them, man, because those dudes deserve to go. I don't care which. Oh, no, yeah. They, oh, yeah. Every man felt that. We all knew he was good to go. Bro, you can't like, <laughs> I don't care what no police, no cop, any of them say. Do that to my daughters or my, like, bro, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. Heads are flying off. Oh no! I think the police will be with you, honestly, on some real shit. I know. Yeah, that, man. I, I don't know, bro. I no, we think... with you. We, no, some of us like, we will be with you on some real shit. <laughs> Ain't no I'm way. Sorry. I'm not trying to come to bad, but I'm like y'all would never understand. I mean, not you specifically. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about you when I. I don't think they'll ever understand. Like I say, I don't think you're ever gonna understand how it feels or what happens to your loved ones, and then you can come and talk to me about that. Because we get to guess for me, I'm going to. Because trust me, more likely I'm going to jail. Oh, I'm going to jail. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. I ain't got nothing to lose neither. I ain't got yeah, nothing, nothing to lose. lose. Yeah, no, I ain't got nothing to lose. Life. Exactly. And it's just like I'm. I'm cool with that at that point because I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all, damn mind. I think I'm just gonna let this shit transpire. Y'all crazy. But I will. I will say this, man. I'm glad you watched a good amount. Come out a good amount of come out of anime. That's mm. good. Um, I will. Uh, I tell everybody. Listen, I am doing um, first impressions to all these ones, these current ones that are coming out. So mm. do look forward to those. I'll still drop them on the main channel for now until so I tell everybody. I want all my anime audience to literally transfer over to the other channel because that's where it's all going to be dropping off soon. Like I said, most likely, like I said, it's going to be over here. But I'm going to download them and put them all on the other channel. Is what I'm doing. But everything mm. that I've ever done, well, I say everything, but stuff that I've done here, I will transfer it over particularly and new stuff is going to be over there so and also i'll tell anybody this if you have any cast man i love anime man tell hey man send them my way and tell them to check out the content over here and also uh, uh, tell, and if they like the real world stuff tell them to check out the one-on-one -on -one interviews that you me that i've done with other cats over here that's also a big thing for this channel like people i think I people like the chill vibe that. over here more than anything i could do that easy because uh i'm actually on on facebook i was a part i still am a part of it but it's a, a club called anime debate Animation debation. Basically, we talk about all anime stuff, but it can also go into the DC world a little bit, whatever, Marvel world. But mostly it's like all superhero stuff, all anime stuff, all gaming stuff. It's just everything that's kind of compassed, you know what I'm saying? Um, we usually debate about who we think will win between this or that or some stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the, I think I did share one of your joints on that platform before. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't mind putting your channel out there and leaving a link or something like, yo, he specializes in talks about anime. I know we do that here, but you know, if I you tell you about asking me a question if you want, and then I'm I'm, I'm yeah. telling you about I can, tell, I can talk specifically about that genre if you want, like psychological stuff. So I tell you about you say psychological, I can give you three off my head: psychopaths, mm -hmm. chaos, uh, chaos child, freaking mm -hmm. um, Grisaya. Grisaya, actually, I'll be honest, if you're a military man, you really like Grisaya. Mm. Let's just say another thing, another story about a boy whose innocence needed to be protected. Mm. Let's just say that. Mm. I don't mean like the gut story. I'm talking about like it's an effed up story when you get his Damn. backstory. But there's two seasons of it. You don't get his, and, I'm, and I, I, I tell everybody, I told everybody this in the first uh, um, anime talk I ever did. Check out, check out Grisaya. Grisaya was amazing. I actually met a person that was an anime fan that came on and we talked about it and I was actually surprised at his knowledge about it. And I told everybody, I'm like, yo, check out that series. That's actually one of the best, if not more mature series that I watched. Mm. And and see, you think it's him helping a bunch of girls out. I mean, I've been like, no, dude. 
it actually goes even further to that. They're a part of it, but they're not the main reason why you stood there. It's because he's such a great character and has been through so much when you get his whole backstory. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not yeah, gonna spoil this yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, I, all, I can, all I can say is, you want that brother to live. Let's just say that. Mm. Once I saw that, I was like, bro, he gotta be one of my top three best. He's gotta be one of the best characters at a young age to be so mature and actually I'm rooting for this brother to get a W because of all the bullshit in his life. Mm. And also what he's managed to do, what he's managed to accomplish all that time. I'm mm. like, yeah, bro. I I need you to get like I he needs to have a good ending, particularly. And I like to remind it's, me of uh yeah. what you describe and kind of remind me of this one uh movie from It's military too, by the way. But yeah. yeah. So it's definitely like that. But it's a yeah. movie called Villainous. Villainous. It's a Korean film. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You seen that, John? I've heard of it. No, no, I've heard of it. That's on my list to watch. Actually, yeah, that you want to about character development. Her character, bro. God, damn, bro. Cause she like. It's basically like you ever want to see a movie about how the Joker became the Joker. Like it's, it's like bigger than the Joker movie? was. It was like, damn, this bitch. Everything she went through, like she deserves anything. I don't, I don't, I don't judge. I don't judge for nothing. But whatever she becomes, it is what it it's is, fair. bro. It, basically, like, cause her whole, her whole life, bro. Her whole life. Man, I was just like, she don't get no man. fucking breaks, bro. I yeah. was like, shit. I mean, it's getting worse. It was just getting. That's why I was like, you just kept getting worse, <laughs> bro. I, 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 honestly, you need to. I tell I tell man, if you see him show a movie like that, bro, you better hug your wife. <laughs> like, like, let it see your wife be grateful for what you got and just make sure that never happens to you guys. Just be careful. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I, I tell people, say, like I said, you go down that rabbit hole too much, man, you might not like what you see, bro. Or may not come back from that. That's why I tell people, some of these series we like that are mature, we like them for, to an extent. But, um, for example, there was a series called, uh, one of my favorites that, got, just, that just got a remake. And um, it's, it, it ended was it 2019 or 2020? I'm pretty sure it was 2020. It ended, or 2021. I have to mm-hmm. see. But um, it was an older series that got a day out of um, It's called Fruit's Basket. And I tell you, bro, that whole series, I swear, every fucking character has something fucking wrong. There's no way no boy can relate to any of these dudes. You relate mm-hmm. to some one of these boys. Like to either the adult men or the young men. And there were like three I related to. I remember when I was young, there was only one dude I related to. Now that I'm old, I relate to the other one particularly because my anger's all gone. So it's kind of like just having to interact with other people now at that point. Because I felt mm-hmm. like I, I started off when I was young. I ended like a, I ended like that character, you know, and I came out like more of like a Hataharu type of Yuki type character where it's just chill. But mm-hmm. there was one episode particularly where this girl just went went through like. I ain't never, I ain't never had a, I never had a, a fucking episode that I mean that actually got me to be depressed. I had to call up my homie. Damn. I had to call up my homie. Damn. I had to call up my homie. I said, bro, I, we need to speak. God, damn. I, I wasn't even smiling. I couldn't even, I couldn't even like, bro. I'm like, damn, damn, damn. And normally, and normally, saying it's not even a saying. It's just it was more like a dark shoujo side of life type tragedy type series. Is what it was, is what it is. And um, it ends, trust me, it ends good. That, that shit, damn. If you can't relate to Kyo in any way, if you can't relate to Yuki in any type of way, if you can't relate to Atoharu, freaking Shigure, well, you're probably a grown ass man if you're Shigure, that ass. That, that's the only reason why that works. No boy man should go to the dick that. If you can't relate to any of these men if you're a boy, you're crazy. Because there's less girls in that series. I don't want to hear shit. So, you can't, really, if you can't relate to any of the men's struggles that you may have had in some sense see yourself, then, hey man, you must have the perfect family. And I doubt that you did. Because, be, now nah, that I'm going to call Cap on. Because <laughs> everybody has something. But, oh, yeah. But it's just like, yo, I watched that episode and I was just, I was like, bro, like, I got to call my, I got to call my homie up, bro. Like, shit, this shit is just, yo, they took it that level. I never thought they'd ever managed to break me. Ugh. I, ooh. That's a 10 out of 10 series, but damn. 
And that was on season um two. Mm. I was just like, yo, fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck you guys, bro. Fuck you. And not to mention the aftermath of what happens to her. Good thing her dude fucking found her or some shit. Because he actually, he actually, he actually got pissed off once he found out what happened. Wait, all those years ago, you telling me she? Wait, who did this? No, it was a little. And it kind of was one. It's a member of the family. I told him it was like a little boy. He's like, you know, I see. I was like, brother, sister. Yeah, my, yeah, my little brother, sister. I love y'all a lot. Thank you for telling me the truth. This motherfucker had the look of like I'm a kill this, <laughs> and just went ape. Like he had to. He said like, yo, bro. He said the only reason why you did that is because. You don't want anybody to have happiness and everybody be miserable just like your ass. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, fucking right. Thank you for calling out on her bullshit. <laughs> so, so you know, series like that, that tackle that psychological psyche of a person, mm. especially young high school boys who go through shit or girls that go through shit, like, it touches on that very well. And I'm like, people says, oh, it's over, dude, it's not even dramatic, to be honest. It's just fucked up. And, like, dude. Every one of those boys has a problem, like like have a problem, and they just have some psychological trauma and damage done to them. Mm. Especially the main freaking dude who actually got a W at the end. That's all. I, I ain't spoiling shit. I just said he got a W at the end. It's amazing that he even got anything. If he would have, I'll be honest. If he would stay by himself, only thing I can say is he went through a journey that like he needed to go to, and then he had he had his father like figure in his life. Let's just say that mm. Mm. to give him some hope. And that was another example why freaking fathers are important. And I can use that to my, I can use that argument. Because he was a father figure. Mm-hmm. I only hope he had. And he taught him to be a better man because of it. To get out of this fucking obnoxiousness and actually go the fuck up. So, yeah. And so when, so when people make the argument saying that, yo, um, this is why I don't fuck with women who say like anime is for kids or bullshit like this. Um, Bitch, you'll know what the fuck you're talking about. You can't understand, like, the process that went into writing these type of stories to actually give some sense of gravitas to life of someone's meaning or what it means to someone. Because I've, I've been reading a lot of comments on some of these anime movies that come out that they stop them from committing, quote unquote, self deletion and things like that. And when I've done, and when, and when I've um, seen that, like, for example, the, um, I'll, I'll tell you what movie it is too. When I read those, it actually surprises me. And it's just like, yo, man, anime be saving people's lives. She might go through something very deep and very dark in life in a period of their lifetime. Be in the worst pit of hole. But something can come but something like an anime can save them from going off the deep end. Or terrors committing self deletion. Because I'll be real. Because when I hear stuff like that, bro, I'm actually God for Japan the, the, the Japanese people for creating this, the mediums that they make. Because who knew who knew that they were saving lives, or that, or, that, or honestly, that we can actually relate to some of these people in there. Yeah, Going to the superpowers, but at least to some of the struggle and traumas that we go through every life. And I think the best way that's conveyed sometimes is not through live action, but sometimes it's through animation. And I could do a, I'm, honestly, guys, I could do a whole essay on this shit if I wanted to. I'm pretty sure if I had my own professor, you'd probably give me a B to an A on it. If I actually wrote down like. Why, why does uh, why do you relate to anime, or why do you uh, why why do you love these stories that you think they convey in such a good manner? If they were to ask them in a particular way. I'm not saying I'm not phrasing it right right now, guys. I'm saying if they were to say, why do you think anime has such gravitas to it? Now that I can answer. I can make a whole essay about that if I wanted to. I'll make it easy. I have a bullshit. The simple answer is this: anime still has roots of humanity tied into it. That's what mm-hmm. makes it relatable. And it, just like anything else, it's an art form. It's an expression. So yes, it can, like you said, it can save lives and stuff like that because of the impact, how it makes you feel. It still has human ties to it. You can sense the familiarity in it. So yes, you can relate to it. Yes, you can feel something that's gonna move in a certain way. It can motivate you. I mean, shit, I think Dragon Ball Z motivated me a whole lot when, was, I, when it came to like work, working out and shit and getting stronger, like I'm saying, right, like exactly. <laughs> it just but, but also, you. But also, I'll, I'll actually throw something else in there. But yeah. does it for like if you're not an anime fan, would all social media you go to the gym and get better? Rocky and Creed, I put them up. Yeah, that's all you need for, for like dudes who aren't in anime. That that'll work. 
You see Michael B. Jordan? That took fucking work. <laughs> like most of his, most of his, like he likes anime as much as we do. And his third movie was based, like he used anime things from that, which I love that he did that. That would make me so happy that he did that. I'm glad he had a chance to show his creative muscles. You also guys got the, that new UFC uh, champion right now. He, uh, uh, Adesina, Adesina, uh, the UFC guy who's just the black dude. He always references Rock Lee. He always references yeah, like about. Street Fighter characters like Sagat. He, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm he, he said he loves Naruto a lot, bro. Yeah. All of them. So he said, I love Rock Lee. He's like doing the whole tattoo. He has like tattoos and shit of them on there. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. He was the first dude that got introduced in the UFC. When I when I looked him up one time and I'm like, wow, he really loves this shit. I'm like, he really is embodying with it. Yeah. Which 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 like I said, like like any woman that any woman to me that turns out to be a dude that has everything that he has, but also but just likes anime, you turn him down for that. I think you're a wild and chick because he has his vices and you should have yours. And you shouldn't turn him down for his. Specifically something that he yeah. likes. Loves. But you know what though? It's because to me, I'm not dropping anime for any chick. Sorry. I happen to say, you know what it is, Scott? You know what? You don't gotta worry about it. Think of it this way. Because it's true. Very true, I'm about to say. The world don't owe you no understanding. So exactly. Certain girls don't want to understand what it is that you're talking about. Yeah, let them not understand. It is what it is. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's for them. You know what I'm saying? Personally, like I said, I like to understand everything so I can always have peace. So like at least I can know where the lines are at, so I can respect people who have different opinions and different things. I don't have to agree with them or like the things they do, but again, I can still respect that line, so I don't ever find myself being disrespectful. So like I said, when they go to you and they start saying all this stuff, yes, it's disrespectful because you can just simply say, "Oh, I'm not interested in that," but I get it though because you understand it. But right, you don't have exactly. to come off and try to shame someone. Be like. Yeah, oh, yeah, those child, you are blah blah blah. So now you're being disrespectful just because you don't. Yeah, agree. you're disrespecting something a crap that I love. For example, if you're disrespecting cooking, I'm like, from, like when I hear that, it tells me that you've never cooked a goddamn day in your life. Because no one will make a because no one will make a jab like that. If they want to secure or if they couldn't do such and such thing. Mm-hmm. Or you or how about this? You need to feed off some. You need to you know you need to use negative energy to try to feed off someone's good energy. And we're not gonna give that to you. Like I tell people, I don't argue back and forth with people. I'm not gonna do that. I'm 31 that's years true. old, bro. And the that's reason true. why, like that's like that's still high school child mentality. And I need it. And I need to grow the fuck up. I'm not doing that. Still, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't tell anybody that to their face. You're I'm listen. You're a grown ass woman. Act like it. You're a grown ass dude. Act like it. Like I said, just like I said, you got too fucking grown to be acting too fucking childish. It's ridiculous. At the same time, I'm at a listen. I'm at a point now where, hey, listen, you want to die? I'm not die. You want to be in the gutter? Be, be in the gutter. I'm not gonna be there to help you. That's not my job. That's up for you to get yourself up. Like I said, I can all I can do is really give you advice. If you don't take it, take it as you want. I don't care. Nobody gonna stop you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but 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 I'll tell you this. I'm not gonna be at your hospital bed. It's not me. Simple enough. And the reason why I have to be so stern and direct with you is because it's how I was raised and taught. And I respond to that. That's what helped me get out that gutter and that little clutter. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Look where I'm at now. I'm not even homeless, so I'm good for the most part. If I didn't listen, I probably would be. But I'm good now. So things like that. Like I said, I'm still trying to improve and get better. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Me and Marcos are going to have a chat chat below before he goes and takes care of his texting because I want to show him something real quick. And um if you guys if you guys enjoyed this conversation, I want you to follow my man Marlon's opinion. I'm gonna put his channel in the chat because I have it saved and I'm also subscribed to it in the description below. And if you like this conversation, um if you like this quote unquote uh one on one talk that we had um be sure to like subscribe all that jazz and come on guys. Like I said I'm at 232 subscribers y'all. Yeah, I know. Like, I know y'all can spread the share the video around to some people out here who like this kind of content that we're doing over here. So, so like I said, so, so don't be lazy. Hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the like button and check out the other content on here. All that jazz. Y'all have a great night. Marvelous. Would you like to say something to them real quick before I end it? Oh, sure. Um, guys, stay blessed. All right. And as I always say, love yourself. Truth, faith, and understanding. Always be patient. That's all I got to say, guys. Peace and love.
Guys, be sure to exercise and drink green tea. Normally I say the green tea and then exercise, but do the exercise first and then drink the green tea is what I would tell you to do. Like I said, I worked out the other day. I got a hell of a workout, trust me. I'm sore, but I'm about to do calisthenics tomorrow because my one day of rest is over and I got to get back to it. So um, with that being said, y'all have a great night. Peace out. And um, like, I said, be sure, like I said, be sure to check out this, the other secondary channel when the finally um, the content starts dropping, y'all. Uh, have a nice day, all right? Peace.